Good evening. We begin with breaking news and Buckingham Palace has just released a statement about the health of the King. It says this, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he has been advised by doctors to postpone public facing duties. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which was made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. Uh, the palace also released this new image of His Majesty to coincide with the statement. Let's bring in uh, Royal Correspondent Laura Bundock, who is at uh, Buckingham Palace. Uh, good evening, Laura, and a, well, a very significant statement from the palace. Yes, uh, both a significant and a serious statement from the palace this evening regarding the King's cancer diagnosis. Now, it was a couple of weeks ago when we were told that he had, um, after seeking medical advice, been diagnosed with an enlarged prostate and would require what was described as a corrective procedure, that procedure taking place 10 days ago. It was a week ago today that he was discharged from hospital, but we now understand following subsequent tests that there has been a cancer diagnosis. It is not prostate cancer and details of the kind of cancer the King has will not be shared at this time. But we know that he has undergone his first series and in a series of treatment for the cancer. He was last seen yesterday on the Sandringham estate where he attended morning service at St Mary Magdalene Church there. This morning he made his way back from Norfolk to London where he was admitted as an outpatient to hospital to start the treatment for his cancer. We are not being told the details, as I say, of the cancer nor indeed the hospital but he has now had to cancel all future upcoming official duties and we don't yet know when the king will be back. He is not appointing councillors of state. That means he is still able to carry out the, the official paperwork, the state paperwork. He has all his red boxes as well he can attend to. But we not, will not be seeing him in front facing. We won't see him out and about for some time. Yeah, and uh, uh, Laura, as you say, uh, just looking at this statement, it was during the hospital procedure for the, and they point out, benign prostate enlargement that what they call a separate issue of concern. So just to be clear, this is separate from his problem with the enlarged prostate. That's right. He underwent surgery for an enlarged prostate. This is not prostate cancer. We're not being told what kind of cancer he has. But it is very unusual, isn't it, to have such a public statement about such a private issue. This is not something we would have seen perhaps with in previous years. But the King, right from the start, was keen to share details of his diagnosis, firstly when it came to an enlarged prostate, keen to raise public awareness awareness and keen to encourage other men to get themselves checked and indeed on the day he went into hospital for the surgery he was said to be delighted that there had been this huge increase in traffic to prostate charities traffic to websites people calling helplines and the like he was delighted the statement said that him going public had had a positive impact on an important public health issue like I say we are told this is not prostate cancer the king has has a cancer diagnosis and has today undergone and started uh, undergoing treatment for that cancer. He remains here in London. He will stay in London for the treatment. We're not 
being told what kind of cancer he has, but he will be um, out of action when it comes to the public-facing uh, engagements that he takes part in, something he is apologising for that he has had to cancel um, in advance. We were told to expect a, a short period of recuperation following the operation. We now know this could be much longer. Right, and just again to reiterate what we're getting in this statement, um, His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatment. So um, if, if that has commenced today, it is clearly uh, important. And uh, I mean, I suppose one suggestion is it is some form of chemotherapy that he will be undergoing. Palace will not be sharing that information and are asking the media perhaps not to speculate in terms of what kind of cancer the king has or indeed what kind of treatment he is undergoing. But they do want to share the details we have that he has had a cancer diagnosis and that he was keen to go public with, with this. And I think to raise awareness as much as possible about these things. We certainly know when it came to uh, the diagnosis of an enlarged prostate, he wanted to share that very private information to encourage people uh, to, to go online to, to get themselves checked. I mean, we, we now all now know that one in three men aged over 50 can suffer from this. It is a common condition and the King delighted that him going public has had and caused an uptick in the amount of traffic through prostate cancer, prostate charities and the like. Um, certainly the NHS website reported a huge increase in the number of people clicking. But, you know, it is unusual that we have had very public statements about private health issues it, it does say a lot about the kind of monarch perhaps the king is. Um, but we now know that he has started today in London uh, what will be a course of treatment for his cancer diagnosis. OK, Laura, for now, thank you very much indeed. Let me just repeat the uh, statement from uh, the palace this evening about the health of the king. It says this. Uh, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he has been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Uh, throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which was made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as uh, soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. Joining me now is the Sky uh, Royal commentator, Alistair Bruce. Good evening, Alistair. Well, first of all, a serious and significant statement, this from the Palace. Well, I think everybody knows the impact of the word cancer in any life or to any friend or to somebody who we know, and most people know the king as the head of state. And so it does give it something of a focus. I think for the king, though, he has come to this as a very fit 75-year-old, and he has always been very energetic and determined. And as Laura was saying, we saw him at church in Sandringham only yesterday. And so I think that having come down to London, we're here to start this procedure. We know he does so with uh, enormous enthusiasm. His reign has begun with an incalculable number of engagements and activities, and he has thrown himself into the task of kingship. And yet the nation is very used to, in the late Queen Elizabeth II, having a monarch who was, as it were, in some state of uh, health decline, and all the work that is required to be done by head of state carries on. But for the king, having announced now uh, that he has cancer, which is something that almost every family in the world is aware of. And this bringing it to light is perhaps some of the work that the king hadn't necessarily planned to do with his reign. And yet I think the impact of this announcement and the fact that it's being shared so clearly with so many people is part of what he may be able to do uh, to support the nation and all the people who are suffering from this disease. 
Yeah, and Alistair, I mean, he was very open about um, his prostate issues and clearly open now about uh, cancer. Yes, but as Laura was saying, they're going to be quite cautious about how much they say, and yet very much with all these sort of stories, people will want to try and understand more about what kind of cancer it is and what treatment the king is undergoing. But I think the palace will hold that very close. It's a private matter for the king. And I think that what we will recognise now is that a huge amount of interest will focus on that disease and the charities that do so much to try and alleviate the impact of cancer on families will themselves, I hope, benefit from the fact that now the United Kingdom and the other realms and the Commonwealth will keep a pretty clear eye on how the king, who was supposed this year to launch on an enormous number of visits to different parts of the world and much else, and we'll see how this diagnosis and the treatment for it impacts on what I think for the king will be a great disappointment, and that is that he can't just get on with it as he was hoping to tour around and be the king that he is and the head of Commonwealth, head of the Commonwealth that he enjoys being. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he will, that will frustrate him, but it does make the point that even though he's postponing public-facing duties, he is uh, and will continue to undertake state business and all the official paperwork that goes with it as usual. Well, the king is a cipher to much of the business that's done by government, uh, not only here in the United Kingdom, but in the other realms of which he is head of state. And most of that is paperwork and taking advice and following on uh, for delivering uh, the royal part of making uh, bills into acts and everything that the public have required in terms of the political process coming forward and being sanctioned and dealt with, orders in council and all the endless amounts of documents that the king as head of state must sign. But I don't think seeing the king yesterday at Sandringham, we have any doubt that he's got a great deal of energy and capability to do all that. Uh, I don't think we've had a king who's been quite so enthusiastically fit at this age uh, forever. So I think that he will be able to carry out the duties make sure that he supports the governments of the nations of which he's head of state, support the Commonwealth in what he does. And yes, you know, it's a tough time for the Queen too, who will have to support him through this as any partner to someone dealing with cancer at whatever degree has to in some way uh, at this critical time. And so I think that, you know, this is echoing for families all over the world. Uh, the reality that they have probably been dealing with and are dealing with of cancer in their family. Absolutely. Um, Alistair, for now, thanks very much. Joining me is our science and technology uh, editor, Tom Clark. And uh, Tom, uh, a reasonably detailed statement. What do you make of it? As we're hearing there, it would, it's unusual for even information this person would be shared from, from, from Buckingham Palace um, about the king. Um, given how private a cancer diagnosis is. Right, um, Tom, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Your mic is not working, so I'm going to read the statement again, and, right. and, and you um, will try and sort your mic out. So I just want to read uh, the statement, and uh, it says uh, this. During the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent to diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he has been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. And it go does go on to say that he'll be continuing uh, his uh, the paperwork and so forth. But um, that's the statement. Uh, Tom, I again, you've got your microphone back, and I was just asking a reasonably de detailed statement. What did you make of it? Well, yeah, it's unusual, if, in a way, given we, we wouldn't normally expect to get this amount of detail even about a private matter like a cancer diagnosis. Um, we uh, uh, have been in... We have, the palace has confirmed that this is not a prostate cancer diagnosis. But even if we knew that, even if we knew which kind of cancer it is, we'd still be speculating about the health of the king, which is an unwise thing to do about our own health, let alone anybody else's, because cancer, remember, is a very personal disease, where you could look at statistics of survival rates or uh, things like that, or the types of treatment available. 
it varies so much from person to person. This is a, a disease that's created by the own cells of our body. It varies so much between individuals. We wouldn't be able to draw very much from that at all. But I think what we can say is that given how this cancer was spotted, it was a routine procedure for something unrelated that, that found a sign of cancer, we could potentially say that it's been spotted as early as it possibly could be, before the king was suffering any other kind of symptoms, because if he was, it's only reasonable to assume he would have gone and looked for help. So spotting cancer early, of course, is a very important thing, and one of the biggest dictates of how easy it is to treat and how uh, positive the outcomes might be. And there's another aspect towards that here. The king, and maybe inform us as to why we've had this rather public statement, the king appreciates that. He's the patron of a number of cancer charities. He, we've seen the, the, the announcement of the prostate enlargement, the impact that had on public interest in that. By going public, by talking about the fact he has a form of cancer, that encourages other people to consider it amongst themselves. It's something people fear. And the one thing any cancer specialist will tell you, if you're open about it, if you're not afraid, of, you know, that you might have symptoms that might be indicative of it. If you seek help early, if you don't let that fear get in the way, you're more likely to have a positive outcome. So I think yeah. it could be a very powerful and it, um, statement that the King's made. Well, exactly. And, I mean, the, the statement says that, you know, he's, you know, talking about this or the palace is talking about this, of sharing the diagnosis, um, you know, to prevent speculation, first of all, but also in this hope that it could... It could help people, which which was the, the point also about the original issue with his prostate. Absolutely. And, and I think in every case where people um, come forward, if they have even, you know, mild symptoms, any suspicion, any doctor would encourage you to do that because if, you know, the earlier you can spot any form of cancer, mm. the better the outcome is, the more easy it is to treat, and the less aggressive treatment will be required and the healthier you'll stay during the course of treatment. Um, it's also sort of entirely understandable that the king will be stepping back from public-facing roles while yeah. he undergoes treatment. Yeah. Again, just like it would be foolish to speculate about the type of illness he has, it would be just as foolish to speculate about the type of treatment he has. The world of cancer treatment is advancing all the time. There are a plethora of different ways, and many of them improving all the time in terms of side effects and impacts. Um, that you can treat this disease, and it varies a lot depending on the type of disease as well. Yeah. Most of them, however, do have some impact on your, ability, your, your body's ability, sometimes maybe to fight off infections and things like that. Course, so you yeah. wouldn't want necessarily to be in a public-facing role. It can take a toll on the body. Or possibly it's just a fairly uh, regular course of treatments that means it's pretty hard to fit a public diary around that. Yeah. But it's perfectly possible to carry on your day job, which yeah. is what we're understanding based on the prior statements in terms of his, his office roles. Yeah, um, uh, uh, stay with me. We're just going to hear from uh, Lindsay Hoyle, uh, the Speaker of the House, who's been, who's just made a statement, I understand. I wish to make a short statement. I know the whole House will wish to join me in expressing our sympathies with His Majesty the King following the news announcement this evening. Our thoughts are, of course, with His Majesty and his family and with all wish to send him our very best wishes for the successful treatment and a speed recovery following tonight's news. Lindsay Hoyle there in uh, the Commons a few moments ago. Let's bring in our deputy political editor, Sam Coates. And Sam, uh, reaction there from Lindsay Hoyle. Any other political reaction at the moment? Yeah, the news will be a shock across uh, Westminster and across the political system. We have heard from the Prime Minister, uh, Rishi Sunak, already. He says he's wishing his, pri he's, uh, he's wishing his Majesty a full and speedy recovery. I have no doubt he'll be back to full strength in no time, and I know the whole country will be wishing him well. Uh, Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, has also given his reaction. He says, on behalf of the Labour Party, I wish His Majesty and all, all the very best for his recovery. We look forward to seeing him back to swift, full health. I think we're going to get a series of tributes, Mark, across uh, the evening. I can see that they're already pouring in both uh, from front benchers and from former prime ministers like Liz Truss. One uh, that I think I would highlight, actually, is from a Labour front bencher, the Shadow Health Secretary, Wes Streeting, uh, and his 
his reaction is, um, I think, particularly notable because he, too, had cancer. He says, one in two of us will develop cancer during our lives, but millions more are affected when someone they love is diagnosed with cancer. Sending best wishes to His Majesty for his treatment and to his family through the support uh, as they support him uh, throughout. Uh, you've got uh, reaction also from Northern Ireland, the DUP leader, Geoffrey Donaldson, sending uh, His Majesty the King every good wish as he commences, uh, as he commences his treatment. Uh, you've also uh, got um, uh, Mark Drakeford uh, saying he was saddened and that his thoughts are with uh, the people uh, and the thoughts of people from across Wales will be with him uh, and his family uh, this evening. Liz Truss sending every best wish to His Majesty and the royal family as he undergoes his treatment for cancer. He will be in our thoughts and prayers. God save the King. Right, and uh, Sam, uh, just talk to me about the, you know, the impact on politics here in the immediate future. The King, uh, who came to the throne uh, just a few months ago, has had an immense impact on uh, the political scene. The, the, the monarchy sits really at the foundation of our political system. And I think the sense of stability and calm uh, that King Charles has brought uh, in the job uh, has helped calm down the whole, uh, at times, fractious political system. You might have once upon a time thought that uh, King Charles would be something of a reforming uh, monarch, but I think he took the decision that he knew that his job as, uh, as, as king was to provide continuity, stability uh, and support uh, after years of division, division between nations, the United Kingdom, uh, division between the UK and countries over, uh, overseas. He, he sensed, I think, that it was a fractious time uh, and that it was his job to help the nation with political divisions and economic hardships. Uh, and so he has been the kind of steady-as-he-goes monarch, I think, uh, that he would argue that, that the country has needed um, in the last um, year uh, and, and a quarter. Uh, and uh, he feels that that's the kind of continuity that his monarchy uh, could uh, provide and he's provided space uh, for the political system to almost sort of get back on its feet. You'll remember uh, Liz Truss became Prime Minister uh, when uh, his late mother uh, was Queen. Uh, she died while Liz Truss uh, was still uh, Prime Minister. We have had such a turbulent period in politics, I think, that the smooth transition in the monarchy has been absolutely key in calming down, uh, calming down and providing a bit more st uh, stability and, uh, and con continuity, really, uh, and calm uh, in, our, in our political situation. Talking to people around him, he knew uh, that that was very uh, important. So I think the whole political world will turn a little bit on its axis this evening at, at this news, at this just slight injection uh, of uncertainty uh, into the institution that underpins everything that the politicians in our country does. OK, Sam, thank you very much. And uh, just a quick word about uh, reaction from the Duke of Sussex and a source close to Harry is saying that the Duke of Sussex has spoken uh, with the King about his cancer diagnosis and will travel to uh, the UK to see him in uh, the coming days. That's the Duke of Sussex uh, will be coming to the UK to see uh, the King in the coming days. Joining me now is a former boy, uh, BBC royal correspondent, Jenny Bond. Uh, good evening, uh, Jenny. I just wonder, first of all, what you make of this statement. Well, it's it's sad and it's shocking, isn't it? But I think that perhaps, perhaps it's a blessing in disguise, you know, perhaps because of his enlarged prostate, they have discovered a cancer that they might not have got hold of otherwise. Um, a form of cancer, I mean, who knows? We're told not to speculate. Um, but I think we should probably try to follow the lead being given by the palace and by the king himself, which is one of positivity, um, that he is going to continue some of his work, not public facing, um, that he's already started his treatment um, and that he's clearly quite encouraging um, and positive um, about the future. But obviously a terrible shock for him and an even greater shock, I think, for Camilla. I do feel for Camilla um, because he is a rock and vice versa and... Um, all the time she spent in hospital when, when he was there, she was popping in every five minutes, just showed how much they 
they love each other and they feel a bit lost without one another. So um, I think this would be you know, quite, quite devastating for her. But I'm sure she will join him in feeling that the you know, treatment's underway. And these days there's been such progress with cancer treatments that I think we can afford to err on the side of being uh, positive about it. Yeah, it's a good point. And I mean, on prognosis, there is no details about that. Why should there be? Uh, but as you say, um, he says in the statement, or the palace says in the statement, uh, he remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as uh, soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, it is quite remarkable, really, to look at the pictures I did this morning of him going to church yesterday at Sandringham and walking, looking hale and hearty. And, of course, we all thought, well, there you are. He's, uh, he's a man of steel. He's got over this operation, this procedure just a week ago, and he's looking back to his old self. But obviously he was, um, he was doing that, I suppose, to show that, um, you know, things aren't as bad as we are all kind of, you know, we're all on air talking about it, a bit of a sort of doomsday scenario. But I th think we should we should avoid that. We should um, we should not think that because he clearly is in pretty rude health, even with the treatment he's undergoing at the moment, which could be, I don't know, well, it could, could, could be pills of chemotherapy, it could be, could be anything. We don't know and we're asked not, not to speculate. But this may not be as serious as we all fear. <laughs> Exactly. And um, the fact that he has chosen to, to share uh, the diagnosis, I, get, I guess on one level, you know, if he was going to be out of public view and not carrying out his public duties, then that would have led to all sorts of uh, speculation. Uh, that's on one level. But on the other level, there is this whole idea of, you know, he was open about this prostate issue and now being, uh, you know, open to about this? Yeah, to, to an extent. I mean, we don't know yeah. what this form of cancer is. Um, personally, it makes me think of possibly lymphoma. But there we are. I'm speculating again, and we've been asked not to. So um, we just don't know. But I think this was carefully choreographed probably yesterday, um, a deliberate attempt by the king and the palace to show that he is OK, uh, that we mustn't worry too much. But, yes, he has. this is a real setback for him. So early in his reign, obviously. Um, it is a setback and compounded by the, uh, the medical condition, the treatment that uh, the princess has had. Um, this is a pretty shocking start to the new year for the whole of the royal family. And now Harry coming back, <laughs> I mean, maybe that's another blessing in disguise. Maybe finally, finally, uh, his father's illness will, will bring a reconciliation that we've all been talking about, it seems, forever. Yeah, I mean, it will be extraordinarily frustrating for a king. What is it now? Um, 15 months or so. And, he, he, you know, the point has been made many times that he has so much he wants to get on with. Yeah, and he wanted to hit the ground running, and to an extent he has. Uh, obviously, all sorts of things planned for the coming year, trips abroad, lots of work, lots of campaigns. Um, many of them, hopefully, he will be able to carry out. But, you know, this is a... Uh, a signal, a sign of his mortality, the fact he is 75, he's an elderly king, his uh, reign by definition will not be a terrifically long one and I'm, I'm sure this is a, will have brought him up a bit short and he'll be, I think he'll be very annoyed actually um, that this has uh, come his way. But he's a generally quite a positive individual, he can be quite broody, but um, I think he will try to keep um, as sensible about this as, as he possibly can. And I think Camilla will be there to, yeah. to comfort him. Absolutely. And uh, the pictures I th we just saw um, was uh, the king visiting church at uh, Sandringham, and, uh, which was um, yesterday. And yep. th th this, of course, is first outing, well, I believe it was his first outing uh, since leaving hospital... Uh, last Monday. That's right. This first time we've seen him in public and he made that walk from Sandringham House, which is, um, you know, it's a fair old distance and it's it's February. It's, it's not particularly warm, um, but he has his usual overcoat on. He looked incredibly well, walking without any 
um, apparent difficulty or discomfort because the procedure he's had on his enlarged prostate, I only know a little bit about what goes on because uh, men of my age, lots of them seem to have had a similar thing. And it's not very comfy. Um, but he appeared to have made a very good, or appears to have made a very good recovery from that. Um, and I suppose, as I say, it, it, it is hopefully um, a very good thing that that happened so that this potentially more serious condition uh, was discovered and treated hopefully very early, certainly very promptly. Yes, and he, the, the, again, the, the, the point is being made that uh, he will continue with all this paperwork that is just, you know, part of part of the job. He will undertake state business and official paperwork at... Uh, well, he's at Sandringham, I think, at the moment. Um, so it, it, it depends where he chooses to, to, to do that work. Yeah, I mean, if he's going to convalesce, he'll, be want, he'll want to be close to the hospital where he's having whatever treatment it is, um, unless it's being administered privately at home. His, uh, his preference undoubtedly would be to be in Scotland, but that might be a bit far away. Um, but what pressure on the rest of the royal family, continuing pressure? We've got William coming back to work in, in a couple of days' time because obviously Catherine is well enough now for him to leave her uh, bedside. Um, but still incredible pressure on the few senior members of the royal family who, uh, who are in action. And now with the king, uh, well, I don't know how long this is going to take before we see him back. Uh, I'm afraid there will be quite a lot of disappointment amongst charities and organisations who've been looking forward to a royal visit, and there simply aren't enough royals to go around now. OK, Jenny, uh, thank you very much indeed and uh, i'm joined now by a former president of the royal society of uh, medicine roger kirby who's uh, also a leading prostate surgeon thank you very much for uh, being with us and i should just say first of all that uh, he was in hospital Hello. for this um, benign problem you know benign problem with the prostate enlargement um, and they're very clear that this is a what they call a separate issue of concern yes it's um slightly mysterious at the moment because we don't really know what the exact diagnosis is we do know that it's a cancer um what often happens with prostate patients who've undergone uh, a procedure for benign enlargement of the prostate is the pieces of prostate are sent away to the lab, they're checked under the lab, and, and other things are picked up there. Um, quite often, prostate cancer is picked up there, but I think it, it's being said at the moment it's not prostate cancer, so we have to imagine what else it might be. There are a whole number of, of, of different options. Uh, lymphoma was just men mentioned on your program, but there are lots of other things it could be. Uh, I think, it can, obviously, it's a setback because he was hoping that the pathology from the prostate procedure, the bits of prostate taken away, uh, um, would uh, come back showing benign changes only and nothing else would need to be done apart from him to rest up for a few weeks to allow uh, the, the prostate cavity, the urethra, through which the bladder empties uh, out of the body to heal up. But uh, this setback means that further treatment uh, obviously is needed. But we, at the moment, we don't know what the diagnosis is. hasn't been announced. So we have to speculate. Uh, we can only speculate what it might be. Yes, um, we don't really want to get into that at the moment. But what we do know is he had this procedure for an enlarged prostate. Um, yes. What would that have involved? Well, that, um, it would have involved a general anaesthetic, most likely, sometimes added on with a, a spinal uh, anaesthetic to uh, numb the area around the perineum. And then the urologist, uh, and it's um, uh, Professor Dasgupta from Imperial College, did this operation in the London Clinic at the top of, uh, of Wimpole Street. Um, the procedure would have called out the, the middle of the prostate uh, and enlarged uh, the urethra to allow the urinary flow to improve. Because as men get older, particularly over the age of 70, about 70% 70 of them will have some benign enlargement and their urinary flow diminishes and the number of times they have to get out of bed at night to pass urine uh, uh, increases from one to two to three to four. And the bladder doesn't, bladder doesn't empty so well because the outflow from the, outflow from the bladder is blocked. So he's been unblocked, as it were, and yes. uh, something has been picked up either on a scan or a blood test or more likely on the pieces of prostate 
that have been analysed under the microscope, something else has been picked up and uh, uh, hopefully early treatment of that will resolve the issue. Yeah, and um, they're clearly keen to get on with it. The statement saying His Majesty has today commenced uh, a schedule, a schedule of uh, regular treatments. Yes, I mean, I think, you know, obviously, as your previous uh, interview was saying, it's, it's a good job that this has been detected. I mean, the, the name of the game with any form of cancer is early detection and early treatment. And the earlier you pick things up, the more likely the treatment is to be completely curative. So we have to keep our fingers crossed that it's something that is easily fixed. Uh, uh, it, it's obviously a setback when you've gone through one procedure and something else is picked up and a second lot of treatment is required. But, you know, had he not come into the London Clinic for the prostate operation, probably this wouldn't have been detected. And therefore, I think this is something that we can be pleased about rather than dismayed about. Yeah. And uh, I mean, no surprise to you that he's been advised by doctors to postpone and um, what they're calling, you know, these public facing duties. Well, not, that isn't a surprise at all. In fact, after this type of prostate surgery, of which I've done in, during my career many thousands, we uh, usually advise patients to take it quietly for four to six weeks after, because there is, after prostate surgery, there's always a risk of what we call secondary hemorrhage, bleeding into the, uh, into the urine, and that can clot up in the bladder and cause problems. So we, he would anyway ha have had to take life quietly for the next uh, few weeks, but if the, something else has been picked up and is now about to, uh, to be, treatments about to be started, he'll need to take it especially quietly. Um, and uh, again, as your previous interview was saying, you know, the, the, there's the, the team in the royal family are a bit depleted at the moment, so it just will mean a lot of extra work for the others to pick up on his uh, all his commitments. Yeah, um, Roger, thank you very much indeed uh, for that. And joining me now is Sky's Royal commentator, Alistair Bruce. And Alistair, well, I mean, you know uh, the King. How do you think he will be dealing with this? Well, I think he'll be pretty aggravated. I think it's always quite a shock to anybody who is hit with this news. And, you know, any family that faces the word cancer knows that it does have its toll on everyone. And you were referring to the fact that, you know, with the king unable to do many of his public duties, the queen obviously will continue. Prince of Wales is returning to it soon. There's the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh and the Princess Royal. But, you know, there is an expectation and a hope across the United Kingdom uh, for a reach to the king in so many public places. And with the king out of the ability to do that for the moment, it will be very aggravating for him. And I think that, you know, he is a man who likes to be very active. He's often seen out for a long walk, particularly if he's in Scotland or in Norfolk. And he likes to keep extremely fit and healthy. And I think, you know, this just reminds us that it doesn't matter how fit and healthy you are. Cancer is often the thing that comes and clobbers people uh, the most surprisingly and the most fully and most dramatically. And I think for the king now, he will be taking the advice of doctors and I think very cleverly trying to make sure that the situation he is in is a catalyst for as wide a group of people as possible to be aware of how important it is to get cancer found, diagnosed and dealt with. And I'm sure that having start his treat started his treatment today, after only very recently we saw him coming out of hospital looking extremely hale and hearty and starting his recovery from the first uh, bit of treatment. But now that it has developed and we've been told it is cancer, you know, for the king now with the queen at his side uh, to get himself better and back to work. Yeah, absolutely. And in this last year, 15 months or so, I mean, he has or others on his behalf also have made it clear just how much he thinks he's you know, wants to get on with. The king has waited to be sovereign for many, many years during the long reign of his mother, Elizabeth II. And, you know, throughout that time, he kept himself busy with a number of charitable businesses and other things as well. But now that he is king, we've witnessed an enormous amount of enthusiasm. He has hardly had a day without engaging in something else or something new. And the household at Buckingham Palace has been constantly putting on receptions and events in order for the king 
in what I imagine he sees as a very limited amount of time in his reign to have an enormous effect supporting the Commonwealth, the other realms of which he's head of state, and making sure that in the political sphere and in the state sphere, he is the sign of continuity that his mother always was and which he wants to carry on being. And I think his, his delight at meeting people is part of his greatest strength. And the fact that he won't be able to do that for a time because he needs to deal with this diagnosis of cancer will have an impact on him, and I think we'll miss him. Yeah, and I think I think it was you made the point earlier, or maybe Jenny Bond, who the, talking about the role that Camilla now has. Well, the Queen has been the most enormous support to the King. You see him light up when she's around, and she has been always able to lift him out of any situation that may bring him down. And I think that for that alone, you know, to have a helpmeet in life of that importance is great for anybody. But I think in The King, particularly, we saw her with him at his side as he left church at Sandringham yesterday. She has, since the rain began, uh, been a very forthrightly supportive queen to his kingship. And I think that you know, that will be very important. And I think mm. the family generally will be uh, keen to support him. But he's got plenty of people there to encourage him on. And I think, you know, anybody who faces cancer is generally uh, at an advantage if they have family near, friends near, and people who are helping them uh, with that diagnosis and treatment. Yeah, and you just touched on this um, a moment ago, you know, the impact on the rest of the royal family because unquestionably the king had i mean had countless duties ahead of him public duties ahead of him in the next few weeks and months well and also we heard that the duke of sussex is coming to see his father and i think that you know families often have difficulties but what is really special is that when really important things happen uh, like a diagnosis of cancer whatever the issues are in a family it is generally understood that people come together and do their best to support each other. And I would imagine that it's quite a shock to the Duke of Sussex to hear that his father, his papa, is in a bad way and he'll come over and uh, provide that youthful support uh, that the King will remember right from the day uh, Prince Harry was born. Yeah, and on that, uh, I should just say that uh, what you're talking about is this source close to Harry saying the Duke of Sussex has spoken with the King about his uh, cancer diagnosis and will travel to the UK to see him in the coming days. And just finally, for now, Alistair, you made the point there, and it's, you know, no secret relations have been pretty tricky, but that Harry, uh, on his way to the UK uh, in the next uh, few days to see the King. Well, uh, assuming that is all confirmed, but it's very natural, I think, for anybody to want to come and give both emotional and physical support to someone in their own family. But as I say, families can be complicated places. And, uh, you know, the world has been watching quite a lot go on. But the bottom line here is that an announcement has been made that the king, after undergoing uh, treatment, has been seen to have cancer and that that has received its first treatment today. And I think for the king and for the state and for all the role that the king provides within the constitution as a sense of continuity and stability, uh, we recognise that just every now and then, however constant and stable you are, cancer can be very unsettling. Absolutely. Uh, Alistair, thanks very much indeed. Our Royal Correspondent Rhiannon Mills uh, joins us now. Uh, good evening, uh, Rhiannon. Um, now, just talk us through the key points uh, of this statement. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's worth uh, reminding ourselves exactly what Buckingham Palace announced at six o'clock this evening. Uh, I think it has come as a shock and a surprise to many people. They said that following his recent hospital procedure for a benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. And as a result, there has now been this separate diagnosis 
of cancer. Now, it has meant that uh, His Majesty has commenced a schedule of regular treatment today, uh, during which time the doctors have advised him, which you would understand that he is to avoid uh, any public facing duties. We're also told, though, that uh, His Majesty is going to continue to carry out the behind the scenes business, if you like, of being head of state. So accepting those red boxes full of papers, he will still uh, have his weekly conversations with the prime minister and deal with any other official business that he has to. Um, they're also very keen to point out just how grateful the king is to both his own medical team for their swift intervention when it comes to this, um, but also I think the good wishes that he's had from people right around the world uh, since he went in for that um, procedure on his prostate. But I think, as Alistair was saying there, there is going to be a frustration for the king. We know that he is a very active monarch. Uh, I was outside the hospital on Monday when he came out. He was waving at a small crowd who'd gathered. He wanted to make sure that he took the time to slowly walk to get into the car to make sure that he waved and acknowledged everyone who'd come out to see him. Um, but, yeah, the doctors at the moment are saying that he must avoid any of those public facing duties. I have to say this announcement has come as a big surprise when you think about the photographs that we saw yesterday of the King at Sandringham walking to St Mary Magdalene Church. I have to say when I saw those pictures I thought well he seems to be recovering pretty well when it comes to that procedure that he's had. But now of course I think for the palace it is in many ways important that they they own this announcement of course social media and the world as it is now, things can potentially leak. And for them now, they have been able to announce themselves what they want to tell us, which is that it is not prostate cancer. They won't tell us exactly what cancer it is or what stage of cancer or what treatment he's having. But they do want to make sure that the world knows about this, I think, to try and make sure that he is now given a bit of space, a bit of time to recover and I, want they, I think what they also want to do, try and do is, is try and slow down the speculation as to, to what exactly is wrong with him. Of course, that's going to be very difficult as he is our head of state uh, and also monarch of so many other Commonwealth realms as well. Yeah, yeah and thanks very much indeed. And uh, Tom, uh, it's uh, Tom Clark with me. It, and that's a very good point, isn't it? That they're, you know, the, the, they say they no are sharing the diagnosis to prevent speculation. Um, but speculation there will inevitably be. Of course, there, and there always is in these situations. He's our monarch. We uh, care about his welfare and also the impact that's going to have on, as we are hearing from Sam earlier, politics and, and daily life. Not, uh, not only that, the impact it has on the rest of the royals, having, having someone having to take a step back from duties for a while, for all those reasons. But, like, I think I was trying to explain before, even if we did have more details about the type of cancer or the stage it's at, it's such an entire, a hugely variable disease that depends entirely on the individual. In fact, treatments now are trying to be tailored more to the individual to improve, uh, you know, survival rates. So it wouldn't really... We'd still be speculating even then, yeah. and it would, be, it would be largely pointless, I think, uh, and that's something that would be between him and, uh, and the clinicians, clinicians looking after him. Um, but I think it's also important to remember, you know, the decision to make this statement and what that says. I think the, the, the king, in, in former roles as a patron of cancer charities, was used to the, the knew of the importance about sharing and being open about cancer and that improved survival. Um, and survival has been improving. You know, it's uh, doubled in the last mm. 50 years. Mm. Jenny Bond mentioned something interesting about fear. I think that's what used to keep people from talking about it. I think it still does. If you can try to take fear out of the equation, you can talk about it more. It's worth bearing in mind, because survival rates are improving, maybe we don't have to be as afraid. It still is a very serious condition. Some cancers can be very difficult to treat, and some have lower survivabilities than others. But if you take fear out of the picture, you can be more open. I think it's... Interesting that you know, the king's grandfather, George VI, died of cancer. That was kept completely under wraps. You know, that was something that yeah. was not discussed because at the time, survival rates for cancers were extremely low. Treatment options were hardly available. Uh, yet the world is a very different place now. Um, and the king knows that. He knows that by talking about it, it makes people more likely to think about their own health. And it's important, I think, also to remember half of us, 50% of uh, the UK population, statistically, will have cancer, will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their, in their, in their lifetime. So yeah. that's important to remember. Yeah, and um, they make the point very clearly um, 
uh, near the beginning of the statement, in fact, that he, the, the, the schedule of regular treatment began today. Yes. So they got on this quickly. Um, you know, there are some kinds of cancer which are extremely hard to spot and you know, could be more advanced, but you know, generally speaking, the reason they're more difficult is because they, you know, they're hard to spot. The fact that during a routine procedure for something unrelated, the enlarged prostate uh, treatment that he went in for, they identified signs of a, of a type of cancer is really, in a way, good news. That means it was spotted before there were any other symptoms and he's got the best possible start in terms of a treatment. And the earlier you start, the chances of survival are obviously much higher if it's, if it's the kind of cancer that can be fatal, which, again, we don't know because we don't know what kind of cancer it is. Um, but also, in general, it means the type of treatment you would need might be, you know, is, is necessarily less aggressive. So all the more reason that the king can be positive and hopeful that he can be back to his normal public-facing duties as soon as possible. Yeah, and for a statement that doesn't contain a prognosis, it's po quite possibly not able to contain a, a, a progno prognosis, there, there is this, you know, point of positivity. He remains wholly positive, it says, about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. Which I think in the, in the circumstances is the best thing you can be. If you can stay mm. positive about it, you can stay mentally uh, more healthy, uh, it's only going to help um, how you go through what can sometimes be a, you know, a big assault on your body, a big challenge, which is undergoing cancer treatment, and anyone who's been through it um, would, would, would tell you that, yeah. Yeah, OK, Tom, thank you very much uh, indeed. Let's bring in our Royal Correspondent, Laura Bundock, who is at uh, uh, Buckingham Palace. And, Laura, um, uh, well, it is a, a, a very serious statement and a very significant one. Yes, and I think it will have come as quite a shock to many people as well. We know that the King was discharged from hospital a week ago today. We were told that his procedure for an enlarged prostate had been a success, that there would be up to a month of recuperation. Oh, yeah. um, but we didn't know at this stage that there had been tests following that procedure. And, of course, now the diagnosis of cancer. It is not a prostate cancer we know the King has, um, but he is starting a course of treatment. The Royal Standard is flying here at Buckingham Palace tonight. The King will be at his home at Clarence House just down the road from here. He was at Sandringham over the weekend. We saw him attend church in the morning yesterday, made his way to London this morning to start that treatment as an outpatient. We know that he has told all his siblings and his two sons personally of his diagnosis. We now know, of course, that Prince Harry has spoken to his father and plans to travel to the UK in the coming days. And we also understand that Prince William is in regular contact with the King as well. All of this coming at an incredibly difficult time for Prince William. Um, the Princess of Wales, Kate, his wife, was released from hospital uh, a week ago as well, at least a little earlier than the King, um, after a planned abdominal surgery. And we know that her recovery will be um, potentially up to three months. We're not expecting to see her carry any official duties um, this side of Easter. Prince William is due to resume his duties, but we do know that the Queen, Camilla, who visited the Queen last weekend several times while he was in hospital following his surgery, um, appreciates that she has an important role to play, not just in supporting the King, but, of course, in carrying out her planned engagements. We saw her um, out and about several times last week, um, from Tuesday through to Friday. And in fact, on Friday, uh, she opened Maggie's Royal Free, this new cancer support centre. Um, she knew of the diagnosis diagnosis at this time and she decided she wanted to go ahead as planned uh, to visit the, the centre. Um, so you know, the other royals will be picking up the duties uh, as and when they can. It's not thought the King at this stage will be appointing any councillors of state. He will be able to carry out a lot of his non sort of front facing duties including those red boxes, the state paperwork etc. He'll be able to carry on for as long as is medically advised possible to have those um, weekly audiences with the Prime Minister who was himself told of the diagnosis before the palace made this announcement but you're right it is without doubt a serious um, significant and as I say perhaps a shocking statement today yeah and you mentioned um, Camilla and her role going forward in all this um, a huge role too for other members of the royal family uh, because of the countless number of public duties um, that would have been lying ahead for uh, the king yeah, look, 
the, the royals operate a bit like a school year. They talk about it in terms of terms, basically. So this would have been very much the start of a new term, a term that would have been packed. The king likes to be busy. He knows he has to be seen out and about. He wants to be engaging as much as possible. And so this will have come as a blow to him personally. And in the statement today, we're understanding now that the king is apologising. He, he, he is not happy about the fact he's having to postpone or rearrange what would have been scheduled months potentially in advance. We were expecting um, state visits as well. Nothing had been confirmed. We were expecting the king to travel overseas. We don't yet know what will happen to that. And there's no sense of any timetable as to when he, he might be well enough to carry out any, any public duties. We're not being told exactly what kind of treatment he's having to undergo or indeed how long that will take and if there will be a period of recuperation once that treatment has ended. It was interesting though, we, we were told that the King was keen to go public because as Prince of Wales he um, was a royal patron of many cancer charities and had often spoken out in support of cancer patients. So um, this is something the King knows about, has experience about um, as well. And like I say, Camilla, his wife, who, who was a frequent visitor at the hospital over a week ago, uh, was keen to carry on with her engagement, opening a cancer support centre uh, back on back on Friday. The King all along, this is a very new thing we've seen with the King, has been very public when, when it comes to talking about these private matters, particularly health. It's not something we've, we've really learned to expect from the monarchy, but the King wanting to share the enlarged prostate diagnosis to try and raise awareness, delighted with the fact it had had a positive impact on public health. And now, as someone who's worked closely with cancer charities in the past, very keen to share this diagnosis um, in support of others. And there are, of course, many others going through a similar diagnosis as he has. OK, uh, Laura, thank you uh, very much indeed. Just to recap the news that uh, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of yeah. concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic yeah. tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of uh, regular treatments. Coming up, plenty more reaction to that uh, news. Sarah Jane Mee is at Buckingham Palace next.
Good evening. We begin with that breaking news. We're live at Buckingham Palace, uh, where the King has been diagnosed with a form of cancer. We'll be here at Buckingham Palace throughout the evening with details and updates for you. And I'll be here in Westminster, where we'll be bringing you the political reaction and looking at the wider significance of tonight's announcement from the Palace. Thank you, Sophie. Well, let's bring you that statement from Buckingham Palace, released at around six o'clock this evening. It says, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he has been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. The statement goes on to say that throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which has been made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope that it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. In releasing that statement, the palace also released a new image of His Majesty to coincide with that. Um, let's bring in our royal correspondent, Laura Bundock, who's here at Buckingham Palace with me tonight. Um, right, Laura, let's bring everyone who's just hearing this news for the first time up to date. We know the King was in hospital last week for... Um, a procedure, that benign prostate enlargement, and it seems that from that we now have today's news. Yes, the King has been subsequently diagnosed with cancer, not prostate cancer, mm -hmm. um, but he went in for what was described as a corrective procedure for, so for surgery for an enlarged prostate. He went in Friday before last, so 10 days ago, and stayed in hospital until Monday when he was discharged a week ago. Now, at some point during that procedure, tests were carried out, and as a result of those tests, we now have the King's cancer diagnosis. Today he has started a course of treatment for the cancer. We are not being told what that treatment is or indeed what kind of cancer he has, but he has now returned to London to begin treatment as an outpatient at a London hospital. We're being asked not to speculate mm -hmm. about anything when it comes to the, his treatment, his condition or indeed where he's being treated. Um, but he very much wanted to go public with this. We were told as Prince of Wales he was a patron of a number of cancer charities. He'd often spoken out in support of cancer patients. It's something he knows about, he cares about, which is why he is sharing this news as well. Yeah, he was a patron of Macmillan uh, Cancer Charity as the, the Prince of Wales. Um, and Anyone that works for Macmillan will tell you he was heavily involved with that. He met the CEO regularly, um, went to coffee mornings with uh, the Queen, the then uh, Princess of Wales, in terms of um, going to uh, Macmillan centres in Wales, Glasgow, London. He was heavily involved. So he knows about the science behind cancer and the treatment. Mm, that's right. And it was interesting because the Queen, Camilla, who was at his side weekend before last in the hospital with him twice a day, we saw her visiting, um, carried out a number of engagements last week. The most recent was on Friday last week when she knew of the King's diagnosis and still carried on. She went to open a Maggie's Royal Free, which mm. is a new cancer support centre providing mm. sort of support services to cancer patients. Um, Obviously, we didn't know the diagnosis at the time, but the Queen personally decided to go ahead with that. And like I say, we are seeing a whole new side to the monarch, the fact there is this much more openness when it comes to these, these sort of very private health issues. And I think the King very much aware that by speaking out, he can have an impact mm. and we have seen that already haven't yeah. we with people clicking on various websites and I'm sure this cancer diagnosis mm. as well is intended to, to sort of encourage other people mm. you know to, to get themselves checked to go and see doctors mm. and the like. Uh, forgive me Laura she wasn't Princess of Wales was she? She was Duchess of Cornwall. That's right. Um, in terms of what happens now we have been hearing from a source close to Prince Harry that he will be returning to the UK soon to see his father, as you would expect, of course. Um, but we understand that the King was keen to tell his brothers, his sister and his children before he then notified the Prime Minister. Yeah, that's right. So in terms of what happens next, well, let's look at the personal first. We, he did personally call, not necessarily see in person, but personally speak to um, his three siblings and then, of course, his two sons as well. We know that Prince 
William has been in regular contact with him. And now this surprising, perhaps in some ways, news that Prince Harry is going to head to the UK in the mm. coming days. We haven't seen Prince Harry since last June when he was at the High Court um, involved in, in, in that huge you know, phone hacking ca case back in June. He hasn't, as far as we know, been back since. Certainly we haven't, we haven't seen him here. And we know there are huge problems and, and sort of rifts and all sorts. But we now have the news that, like any you know, child, he wants to be there, wants to support his father, so he will be returning. What does it mean in terms of the duty side of things? Well, we're told the king isn't going to be appointing councillors of state. It's not thought that would be needed. Those are the people who can deputise for him for, for, for big events and official duties. He can still carry out um, not the public duties, but the private, you know, the, the, the government stuff he does. He has a lot of red boxes. He has all the state paperwork. He can still hold his weekly audiences with the prime minister, who was told of this diagnosis just before the statement was released. So from that side of things, I, I think... They feel that they, they can kind of get through this period of uncertainty, but we don't know how long this will last. And we, we don't know because we're being told we won't get sort of details of the treatment, how long this treatment will go on for and, and how long he'll be sort of almost in limbo when it comes to being out and about, which is mm. anyone, you speak to anyone who knows him, is exactly what he wants to be doing at the moment. Yeah. OK, Laura, thank you. Uh, you mentioned the Prime Minister there. Um, we'll go back to Westminster and Sophie uh, for the Prime Minister's reaction shortly. But I just want to bring in our royal commentator, Alistair Bruce, who's been following this breaking news uh, along with us this evening. And Alistair, first of all, um, your reaction uh, to this statement from the Palace? this evening it's full of information in one sense and a surprise to get so much detail in fact the king has made sure that we are kept very well informed about the situations that he has been facing and i think that you know the word cancer has the most profound effect on people and when the word cancer is associated with the head of state and one who we have only in the last 12 months seen crowned as our new monarch it does shudder a little and you know for everybody who faces cancer wherever they are it is a moment of taking stock and i think that we as a nation having been informed at six o'clock this evening that the king is facing cancer treatment are taking stock and you know he looked so healthy and well when he stepped out the other day after having the first part of the surgery that we knew he was facing with his prostate. But now that uh, we hear there is cancer, it focuses on many other elements that echo a worry for people and for the king, you know, who's always so enthusiastically energetic. He's always walking great distances. He's frightfully fit for 75. So at least we know he's got all that energy. And I think we're a long way away from being concerned about whether he is able to carry on his duties because, you know, he will be able to do exactly what the head of state must do as we watched the late Queen Elizabeth II continuing into her very late years. And so he'll be fine. And the trouble is that there just aren't that many members of the family to back him up in the work that he had clearly set his hat to so profoundly when he took over as sovereign uh, only a short time ago. Alistair, can we talk about the unprecedented nature of the, the King's openness with, first of all, going into hospital last week for benign uh, prostate en enlargement, but the exploratory nature of what went on showed up this cancer. He ended up with cancer diagnosis. And, you know, I, I was talking to, to people on, on the way here to Buckingham Palace today trying to think of another royal who has been that open uh, about any illness or condition they may have. And this comes just a day after a World Cancer Day. One in two people in their lifetime will get cancer. It affects people over the age of 75. This is the reality of life. So many families right now will be going through exactly the same thing. Can you talk me through the process of you know, why the king will have broken with tradition, in a sense, by making this kind of announcement? Well, the late queen approached everything with that sort of attitude that you don't discuss your private medical arrangements and you keep all your emotions very much in check. And the king is very different. He's always been much more of an emotional person. He's always been driven by that sense of communication and he is wanting, I think, to approach 
this issue, which so many families have to deal with, of cancer and uh, the issues of prostate enlargement and all those things that people have kept very much behind the quietness of their own family privateness. And the king has wanted to bring that out because actually, I think the enormous number of charities he's been involved with, so many people who now are much more honest about how they feel, about what's wrong with them, and about how they share that in order to get better. And I think that the king recognizes that leadership comes in many different forms. But one very good way as king, he has decided to show leadership is to share what is by old fashioned standards, very private in a, the most public way possible. And perhaps this is going to be one of the great campaigns for him is to allow us to witness him dealing with this as so many other people do and bring a focus to cancer, to the charities that try and alleviate the challenges that families face and much else besides. Mm. Alistair, the statement from Buckingham Palace also said that the King will be carrying on with his state duties. He'll be continuing to look over all the paperwork he has to for hours a day, holding his meetings with the Prime Minister. It's just that we won't see him in public facing engagements. Just give, it a, give, give us an idea of the, the level of activity that the King takes on behind closed doors, because we don't see any of that, but we understand that's still going to continue. So the function of government requires the King to play his part in dealing with both approving an enormous number of documents and giving effect to uh, various different instruments from government uh, and through Parliament. So the King will get on with that perfectly happily. I sense that if this lasts for a particular amount of time, that the King will find a way of reaching out from home uh, to continue the influence that he can doubtless bring to an enormous number of the projects that he's trying to uh, raise and support in the early years of his reign. What he can't do is go on all these planned trips around uh, the Commonwealth and to the other realms, which I think was going to be such a great part of this year of his reign. So that will be a challenge for him. But, you know, he is extremely fit at 75. Uh, he faces a pretty large setback. But I expect with the fitness and strength that he has within himself and with the support of the Queen and other members of the family, he'll be able to get on and deliver that steady, deep keel to the state that he, and very much like his mother, uh, is there to provide. And I think that, you know, as long as, as long as he can read the documents, he can sign the documents and he knows what's going on, he can deliver kingship perfectly. It's just always disappointing for someone who is setting out at the beginning of a challenge for which the whole of life has prepared him, is in some way held back and can't do it the way he wanted. But that's cancer. It is. And I was just talking to our royal correspondent, Laura Bundock, a short time ago, Alistair. I don't know if you heard that, but as Prince of Wales, he was a patron of Macmillan Cancer Charity, which obviously offers support um, to those who are living with cancer and their families as well. And he was a very involved patron. He would hold regular meetings with the CEO, wanted to know everything. He knows so much about cancer and cancer treatments. Well, so do most families who had to go through it. And I think he understood in his support of those charities that the alleviation of the shock of the word cancer, the managing through of all the changes in lifestyle that everybody faces when hit by that diagnosis. And, you know, we just might be going to see a bit of a change in how he can do his work, certainly in the short term and perhaps in longer term, but we'll wish him well. And I think that you know, he is therefore at least very much aware of the fact that cancer is life changing. It can be dealt with very efficiently with the incredible advances of medicine, particularly during his lifetime. And I think he's always tried to represent the best of those trying to fight against cancer to help people through and to provide alleviation in families faced by the challenges that cancer presents. And I think that as King facing it himself, well, there's leadership and leadership sometimes throws at you some pretty surprising challenges. And it would appear that the King has decided to pick this one up and run with it. 
Alistair, uh, thank you very much. Alistair Bruce, our royal commentator there, uh, reflecting on the breaking news this morning. Uh, King Charles diagnosed uh, with a form of cancer. He started his treatment today. Let's join uh, Sophie Ridge now in Westminster uh, because shortly after telling his family members, Sophie, of course, as head of state, the king had to tell the prime minister about his diagnosis. You've got reaction uh, about what's been going on politically. Yes, thanks so much, uh, SJ. There'll be lots more from Sarah Jane from Buckingham Palace uh, throughout the evening. But as SJ was saying, this is a deeply personal moment for King Charles and his family, but it's also a political and a constitutional one uh, as well. And just to bring you the news again, King Charles III has been diagnosed with a form of cancer. Now, Buckingham Palace has released a statement. It's worth going back to that, as that is the information that we have at the moment. Uh, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, the statement reads, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he's been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which was made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. So the King there, you know, commendably uh, open about his health, uh, making that decision to share his cancer diagnosis. Still an awful lot that we don't know. And today really is about taking stock. It was only yesterday that we saw the King in Sandringham. We can see the pictures uh, there. He was at Sunday at church alongside Queen Camilla. And today we get the news of that cancer diagnosis and the fact that he's already commenced treatment. Well, we can bring in now our Deputy Political Editor, Sam Coates, because political reaction has been flooding in already. That's right. The political system and the monarchy in close contact the whole time. Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, has responded. He said, wishing His Majesty a full and speedy recovery. I have no doubt he'll be back to full strength in no time, and I know the whole country will be wishing him well. Also, quick reaction from the leader of the Labour Party, that's Keir Starmer. He has written on social media, on behalf of the Labour Party, I wish His Majesty all the very best for his recovery. We look forward to seeing him back to swift, full health. Now, one of the things that happens, Sophie, when there is an important announcement about the royal family is that MPs get told via the Speaker of the House of Commons, and that's exactly what happened earlier this evening in the chamber. Let's watch this with Lindsay Hoyle. I wish to make a short statement. I know the whole House will wish to join me in expressing our sympathies with His Majesty the King following the news announcement this evening. Our thoughts are, of course, with His Majesty and his family, and with all wish to send him our very best wishes for the successful treatment and a speed recovery following tonight's news. There's also been reaction from the First Ministers of the nations of the United Kingdom. And actually, it's quite interesting to see what they're saying. The outgoing Labour leader in Wales, Mark Drakeford, he just says, my thoughts and those of the people across Wales will be with him and his family this evening. But two other reactions are from the nationalist First Ministers. Hamza Youssef, now, he obviously is the leader of the SNP, and he saw and forged a relationship with the King at COP in Dubai. Uh, he's been saying, my thoughts and prayers are with uh, His Majesty the King. I wish him very best for a speedy recovery and a return to public life and also wished well uh, Her Majesty the Queen. Um, and then there's been a reaction from Michelle O'Neill. She's been First Minister of Northern Ireland for three days. And she obviously comes from Sinn Féin, um, not necessarily a party that you would expect to forge strong links with the monarchy, but she has issued a statement saying, I'm very sorry to hear King Charles is, of King Charles' illness and I, wish to, uh, I, and I want to wish him well for his treatment and for a full and speedy recovery. I, I understand she has built up a relationship with the royal family. They've been exchanging letters and Michelle O'Neill even attended the King's coronation uh, after previously attending the funeral uh, of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. So, um, politics evolving around this royal family, and I think that's quite important. Yeah, it's the 
deeply personal story of cancer that so many of us will allies will have been touched by. But it is a big political moment as well. The King obviously stepping back uh, for a period of time from public facing duties. And I think it is a moment where we reflect on the nature of the United Kingdom. King Charles became king one year and four months ago. Um, and he, ex he exceeded the throne on the September the 8th, 2022. And, and, and you'll remember that period very well. There was the death of the monarch. There was Liz Truss as prime minister. It was just about six weeks later that Rishi Sunak became prime minister, um, had, having to go and, and, and see uh, the king then. And, and that period, when King Charles came to the throne was one of incredible political turbulence. Now, at that point, Sophie, when he uh, took over from his late mother, nobody knew what kind of king he was going to be. They knew that he had, uh, when he was the Prince of Wales, been something of a reformer, a moderniser. He had his causes. But what's been so interesting and important for the political system is that it, it seems in that one year and four months that, that, that you know, that King Charles has put that aside and he has emphasised continuity and stability and has brought that through the opening phase of his reign. He has put aside some of his causes, some of his reforming zeal. Maybe that's a matter for his son, uh, uh, should he take over one day. But, but for him, I think it has been... Uh, restoring a sense of calm and dignity to national life in a way that the monarchy can do. And so I think you'll feel just the political system turn a little bit on its axis this evening in worry that one of the most important grounding elements in our, uh, in our system of governance uh, is just a little bit more unstable this evening. Uh, Sam, thank you very much indeed. Sam Coates, that a deputy political editor. Well, joining us now is the Royal Editor of the Evening Standard, that's Robert Johnson. Uh, what's your reaction to the news today? Well, it's a bit of a shock. I, I think that the King is very positive and will be someone who will be, you know, obviously do his best, surrounded by the best um, medical treatment to do his best to sort of see this fight through. But it, as it does leave a sense of instability, um, because at this moment time we've had a senior, other senior member of the Royal Family in, in the Princess of Wales, hospitalised now, recuperating and Prince William now having to look after a young family and his wife now having to step up to support and probably step in for his father in terms of a number of duties so there is a support network there for the king but you know I think we expect an awful lot of him I mean he's somebody who's a bit of a workaholic he, you know we heard that the queen was trying to urge him to slow down um, not that long ago and I think you know it's probably time to start listening to his body. We hope and make, pray he makes a full recovery and um, he's a very fit man and very uh, energetic man. And I think that that's what we can only hope for. Um, there is a system in place. William will be there to support him. Um, we understood that he phoned all of his siblings first and then and obviously William and, um, and Harry as well. But he's going to be flying over to uh, see his dad and um, hopefully there'll be some form of reconciliation there. I mean, he's had a lot of stress to deal with, Sophie, you know, not only the death of his father and mother, but also that um, infighting that's been going on, which can't be great for him to deal with. But as, as a king, I think he's been very positive. He's been a great convener. He did very well in uh, COP28, where he spoke um, at the opening of that, that, um, that meeting, and he did an awful lot of bilateral meetings with regard to what was going on in the Middle East as well. So I think he's been full steam ahead since he's become king and maybe that's taken its toll a little. It's difficult, isn't it, though? Because, you know, you talk there about perhaps the you know, late Queen uh, saying that she'd quite like him to slow down. He's a 75-year-old after all. But this is a man who's waited all his life to be king. He has got passions like the climate change, for example. It's easier said than done. Well, I remember being at Dumfries' house when he was... I was at an event there and he was practically asleep while standing up. You know, he he, he does put, a, put in the hours. Um, yes, and I remember also speaking to him about his painting. He he, he loved to paint, to relax. And when I say he's still painting, he said he hasn't got time. You know, the reality is he knows his time as king is going to be limited. He knows he's a man who is the oldest ever um, heir to the throne, the oldest man to become, um, to actually take the, on the role of king. So... I think, you know, he knows he, he wants to push ahead and do as much good as he can, both on the 
environmental side of things, but also in the real action of what's going on in the world. There are, you know, we have a, a, a not that many great statesmen out there, and this is a man who's been on the world stage for, you know, o- over half a century. So it's quite good to have, as your previous um, guest was saying, someone with continuity and stability and, and somebody that everybody can listen to and respect, which I think he has earned that. Um, and, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a slightly... Um, uh, worry in time. I'm sure that the rest of the royal family will step up and support him. Um, but he will be well, someone who will be itching to to get back to work and um, this will be a frustration for him at the very least. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Robert Johnson there, the royal correspondent at the Evening Standard, reacting to the news from Buckingham Palace tonight that King Charles III has been diagnosed with a form of cancer. Well, the historian and broadcaster Tessa Dunlop is with us now. Thanks for being with us uh, this evening. There's a lot we know from the statement. King Charles has been open about his diagnosis, about what's happened to him. But there's an awful lot we don't know uh, as well. So we're talking, I guess, this evening about a time of instability. Indeed, yes, it's a case in this Buckingham Palace statement of sharing, but certainly not oversharing. We don't know what the treatment will consist of and we don't know what the cancer is. We do know that most cancer treatments are tiring and um, they've explained that he'll be stepping back temporarily from his public duties, although I note Rishi Sunak said that they would still be maintaining their weekly meetings. One can't help but feel a great deal of sympathy for Charles, a man who waited so long to ascend to the throne, a job that he's proved more than capable of doing. And it's rather reminiscent of the late Edward VII, who was an ancient, comparatively in those times, 59, when he heard from his wife that uh, Victoria had died and he turned around and he said, it's come 20 years too late. And, And one does feel damn it, because he's proved so effective. If you think of those tours in France and in Germany, where he was met with rapturous applause, the pitch-perfect King's speech that had a real uptick in terms of viewers talking of the commonality between the Abrahamic faiths, really hitting the right note at a very difficult time for the world. And I, I do sincerely believe he has so much to offer. And actually, ironically, one of the reasons he has so much to offer is because he is this avuncular figure to a rather sort of callow political class. We have Charles, who seems familiar and trustworthy. And I suppose if there is a silver lining, it's great news that Harry's coming over. I think he's been itching to to find a way back in and to rebuild those family relationships. And it is worth noting as well, we don't know much about his condition, right? All all we know is that a form of cancer has been identified, he's commenced a schedule of treatment, and that he is going to continue doing some state business and official paperwork, according to... Buckingham Palace, so I guess we're all finger- crossing our fingers um, that he makes a speedy recovery as well. I just want to bring you a little bit of breaking news because uh, President Biden ha- has said that he is concerned about King Charles's diagnosis. This is according to Reuters. Uh, and he said that he will call him later. So that from the President of the US, concerned about the King's diagnosis and says he will call him uh, later. Uh, Tessa, what, what kind of King do you think uh, Charles has been so far? I think he's been a very conciliatory one who has not overreached or overstepped the mark. Uh, People have been mentioning COP28. Uh, He led, but he didn't overshare. He didn't uh, project what we know are his uh, keen uh, green political beliefs. Um, But at the same time, he was someone around whom individuals and countries could gather because he's proved so credible in that field. It's worth noting that there is a big tour lined up for the end of this year to Australia. And of course, there will be question marks around that. Um, And I think the key will be not to put pressure on Charles. Of course, some steps have already been made. We know because of the issues around being Councillor of State with the Duke of Sussex and so to the Duke of York, we've had the additional um, additions of Edward, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, and so to Princess Royal Anne added to those. There was an amendment to the Regency Act in order that they t- could, uh, t- could be included. When uh, the King acceded to the throne, so to his wife, the Queen, becomes a Councillor of State, and likewise 
Beatrice. So there are people waiting in the wings to take over constitutional duties should it be needed. It was just today I was listening. I mean, you have to realise that quite a lot of the time royal correspondents are shooting from the hip and saying a lot of things that they don't really think, know about. Thinking away all the trade secrets. <laughs> but I did hear quite a key one saying, oh, William will take as long as he needs an Adelaide cottage to be sitting by his wife's side. Well, of course, as those words were being uttered, um, uh, William was tearing up those um, more restful ideas. And I think we'll see more of um, the Prince of Wales. And likewise, I think there will be question marks. If Harry comes over, will it be an exclusively private capacity? Might we see him make a couple of perhaps public appearances? It would be a real chance for a rapprochement, which I know both sides are keen to broker. Um, we're talking about the royal family coming in to make sure that the duties are being carried out that he that King Charles can't do even though he said uh, he is going to continue uh, doing official paperwork and so on uh, mm. as usual um, how do you think the politicians are going to be reacting behind the scenes uh, Sam so I think that there will be concern in Downing Street because Downing Street and Buckingham Palace have incredibly close ties um, staff that work in Downing Street often come from Buckingham Palace, the Cabinet Secretary being uh, one of those, Simon Case. Uh, but the, the, there is a lot of, there's a lot of links between the two institutions and they'll be trying to work out in Downing Street how to deal with this publicly and, 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 and whether the Prime Minister's audiences will go ahead, maybe remotely. Uh, so all of that um, uh, detail to be worked through. But they'll be aware that I think that this sends a tremor through the political system, a tremor that actually is felt all around the world. And, and, and you, were, you were talking a moment ago about the reaction of President Biden. He was actually speaking from Las Vegas. His exact words are, I am concerned about him. And, and President Biden said he's going to give King Charles a call a little bit, uh, a, a, a little bit later. Um, we've also had reaction from Donald Trump, former president, hopefully he thinks president again in the future. Uh, he has said, King Charles has cancer he is a wonderful man who I got to know well during my presidency, and we all pray uh, that he has a fast and full recovery. I, I think the fact that the two competing presidential candidates in this November's race coming out so quickly after a moment like that tells you the importance of the royal family globally. Of course, it's, it's an institution that oversees not just... Uh, that has residents not just in the United Kingdom, but all across the Commonwealth. Um, the king is, is, is head of state of multiple countries. And I think that global dimension means that this is a, this is a moment that, where the whole world will have tuned in. I wonder yeah. if there isn't also... Uh, these are two very old men vying for the most important political office in the world. And Charles, by succumbing to... One, one in three of us, in the end, up with a, with a cancer diagnosis, is a reminder that... Not even the king is young forever. And I think sometimes the extraordinary longevity of Philip and Elizabeth has lulled us into this false sense of security. Oh, it's all right. The winds are the way they live. They go on forever. Uh, king Charles, 75. Donald Trump, 77. Joe Biden, 81. Uh, thank you both uh, very much indeed. We'll have more from Sam and Tessa throughout uh, the programme. But uh, to recap a statement from uh, Buckingham Palace um, with... Lots of answers for us, lots of information being given to us about the King's health, uh, the diagnosis of cancer uh, following the recent hospital procedure uh, for benign prostate enlargement. We can go back to uh, Buckingham Palace uh, now and speak to Sarah Jane, who's standing by there. SJ. Uh, Sophie, thank you. Yes, it's worth reiterating that statement uh, that was released publicly at six o'clock by Buckingham Palace because it's unprecedented, really, in royal history to get so much private information about any kind of conditions, illnesses, and in this case, cancer. King Charles III diagnosed with a form of cancer. Let's read you that statement from Buckingham Palace. It says... During the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he has been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. The statement goes on to say that throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which has been made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. 
He remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope that it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. Uh, the palace also releasing a new image of Her Majesty uh, to coincide with this statement. Sophie, I think it's worth reflecting on that final paragraph because even though this news has come as a shock this evening, this is news that families around the UK, around the globe, as the statement says, are receiving today, will receive tomorrow. One in two of us will be affected by cancer in our lifetime, which is a startling statistic. I remember reporting on it, you know, only seven or eight years ago when it was one in three, a couple of years before that, one in four. This is something that affects everyone. And I think tonight, a lot of people will be looking at King Charles and thanking him for speaking so openly about it. Who'd have thought we'd have been talking about enlarged prostates on the news last week? You know, something that can be considered a little bit embarrassing. Well, it isn't, there's no shame in it. And King Charles coming out and talking about that last week, you know, that reminded people, apparently, you know, people Googling enlarged prostate uh, on the internet the numbers were huge. And even though he hasn't been diagnosed with prostate cancer, it's a form of cancer, they've not revealed what kind of cancer it is. It's a real message to people directly from the king that we should be open about cancer and talking about it. That's absolutely right, SJ. Uh, and as you say, uh, when he was, he, he said in the statement, hasn't he? And also when he was going into uh, the uh, London clinic, the private hospital, for that corrective procedure for enlarged prostate, he's been very open uh, about his health uh, issues in a bid to try and encourage men uh, to get checked and to raise awareness, as you were saying, SJ, uh, of uh, cancer as well. So a really important thing uh, for the King to be so open about his health conditions. But of course, there are questions that follow. We don't know the type of cancer. We don't know what treatment he's having. We only understand uh, that he has today started that schedule of treatments. Uh, and for a time, an unclear amount of time, he's been advised by doctors to postpone those public facing duties. Uh, and really, for a king who, in many ways, has tried to be a stabilising figure, I guess, at a time of such political instability with many different prime ministers. Um, of course, the death of Queen Elizabeth II, which hit so many people hard uh, in the United Kingdom, a stabilising presence um, for the constitution. And now, of course, the instability of cancer and all that means to so many people as well. We can go now to bring in Emily Nash, who is the royal editor of Hello! magazine. Great to have you with us. What's your reaction to the statement from Buckingham Palace? Well, look, it came as a shock. You know, we all saw the King at Sandringham yesterday with the Queen. He appeared to be in good form. And of course, we were reassured by the earlier um, announcement by the Palace that he'd had treatment uh, for a benign condition. So you can only imagine what's going through his mind and, uh, you know, his close family's minds uh, at this news. It's come uh, out of the blue, you know, but we have to also be grateful that it has been detected um, because you can imagine that were it not for the procedure that he underwent, uh, that may not have been the case. But it's a huge setback, obviously, for the king and for the royal family at a time where numbers are depleted, the Princess of Wales is continuing her own recovery, from illness and it's going to require those still in, in action to really step up, I think. And what kind of king do you think Charles has been so far in his reign? He's been very steadying, he's been stabilising. I think that, um, you know, before the change of reign, there was a lot of concern about how things would change um, after 70 years with the same monarch. And actually, he has very much steadied the ship, you know. It has been, um, it's been fairly straightforward. He has proved to be quite popular. I think people were able to connect with him from the very first uh, address he made the day after his mother's passing. And, uh, you know, anecdotally, a lot of people seem to be quite impressed by, by the way he's handling things. Certainly there's, you know, no major call to, to change anything or um, to reject the monarchy. So, and I think, you know, going back to what one of your other contributors said there, 
the fact that he's going through this so publicly, and it is something that most families uh, around the UK can identify with, because we all know someone or have had um, diagnoses ourselves, I think that this will lead to a further outpouring of support for him. Yeah, I think that's it, isn't it? You know, cancer is so familiar to us and yet so frightening at the same time as well. Just that word, you know, evokes so much emotion in uh, everyone because, as you say, we all know somebody who's had a cancer uh, diagnosis. And the fact that he is being so open about it, the King, uh, talking about his diagnosis, about his health, uh, can only help uh, with raising awareness uh, of that. So he's saying that he's going to pause his public duties uh, while he undergoes uh, treatment, but continuing uh, his paperwork and state business. What kind of thing do you think the King is going to be doing throughout this treatment then? Well, I imagine he will be keeping up with his correspondence, which we know he's a huge fan of. He will be keeping tabs on, um, on his various charities, I'm sure, from afar. But it is important that he follows doctor's advice here. So while he is still going to be required to sign paperwork, Certainly there's no talk of any councillors of state being brought in to help out um, on that end. Um, but he's not going to be out shaking hands uh, on busy engagements and living the kind of lifestyle that he's used to, which is having an incredibly packed schedule, um, missing lunches and really working until the early hours most nights. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? He really does seem to be somebody who is such an energetic man, particularly for a 75-year-old uh, as well. Perhaps unsurprising, given this is someone who's waited all his life uh, to be king before being coronated at the age of 74. Um, do you think that there is an argument that this is a man who's brought stability uh, at a time, I guess it's quite a rocky time for politically, but also for the royal family, and, of course, the news that Prince Harry is going to be flying in to see him? Yeah, look, I think that's great to hear. You know, families should come together around a diagnosis like that. Um, but to your earlier point, yes, I do think he has um, maintained some stability. It, you know, the whole transition of reign was remarkable for the fact that it, it wasn't hugely remarkable. It didn't come as a horrible shock, um, despite what some people feared. And things have ticked on very nicely. Um, he's had a, a fantastic first year in the job, I think. Um, so I think that this is, is a huge blow both to him and to the royal family. But we have to look on the bright side and remember that this has been detected. He is going to be receiving fantastic treatment. He has the support of his family around him. And, you know, as the Prime Minister himself has said, he's confident that, that, that the King will be back to work just as soon as he's able. And who do you, we expect to be, I guess, stepping up to fulfil some of the duties that the King isn't going to be able to do while he's having the treatment? And, of course, you know, I'm thinking about the fact that Princess Kate is also uh, recovering from an operation as well. Well, of course, the Prince of Wales um, is going to be shouldering some of that responsibility as heir to the throne. He's taken a bit of a step back in recent weeks, but he was already planning to return to engagements this week. So I think we will see him step in to carry out some duties on behalf of his father. But of course, the Queen as well is going to be very visible. I think last week she was out every single day. It's possibly the most visible she's been um, publicly. And that won't stop anytime soon. You know, she has this dual role now of both supporting the King through this uh, treatment and being there for him, being at his side, but at the same time continuing to be visible and you know, I, my understanding is that she understands how important it is for the institution to be out there, to be um, meeting people, to be carrying out engagements. And that's something she's going to want to keep doing. Emily, thank you very much indeed. Emily Nash there from Hello Magazine. Well, it's understood that Prince Harry has spoken to his father about his diagnosis. The Duke of Sussex is expected to travel to the UK to see the King in the coming days. Well, our US correspondent Martha Kellner joins us now from LA. Um, we're going to have a trip from Prince Harry. Yeah, we know that King Charles told all of his five children personally about his diagnosis. That, of course, included the Duke of Sussex, despite the fact that the pair, uh, it's no secret to say, have a very strained relationship at the moment. Uh, we know from sources close to Prince Harry 
um, that he will travel in the coming days to visit King Charles following this diagnosis. There had been a trip on the book scheduled for Prince Harry and his wife, Meghan Markle, up to Canada next week. They were due to be uh, in Vancouver to mark a year to go to the Invictus Games, which is um, an event for wounded, injured service men and women that King Harry has been a long-time advocate for. That was due to happen next week. We're not sure whether that will take place now because he is going over to, to the UK. Uh, don't know whether he'll travel on a commercial flight or on uh, a private jet to visit his father, but clearly uh, any blood, bad blood between the pair has been put to one side in order to, order to focus on the King's health. Uh, other reaction from the United States, uh, and this story is taking precedent on, on the network TV channels over here, there is an enduring fascination with the royal family in the United States that extends to King Charles's health. Uh, just in the last few minutes, um, President Biden, who's appearing uh, on the campaign trail in Nevada, uh, he was asked by a reporter travelling with him if he'd heard about the King's diagnosis. He said he had, that he was concerned about the King uh, and said he hoped to speak to him soon, uh, God willing. Also from the former president, Donald Trump, he's released a, a statement on his Truth social media account. He said, King Charles has cancer and he is a wonderful man who I got to know well during my presidency and we all pray that he has a fast and full recovery. So that's the uh, ongoing political reaction here um, to King Charles's uh, sad diagnosis with a form of cancer. Uh, interestingly, uh, the subject of public figures going public uh, with their illness diagnosis it, it is something at the moment. I think we now have um, President Biden uh, appearing on camera uh, reacting to King Charles' diagnosis. I think we can bring that to you now. Yes, I'm concerned about him, just heard his diagnosis, but I'll be talking to him, God willing. Uh, yeah, so there, uh, President Biden, slightly obscured by reporters, but you can hear what he says, just to, to repeat that. He said, I'm concerned about him. I just heard about his diagnosis. Uh, someone then asked, a reporter then asked if he'd spoken to the king, and he said he hopes to speak to him soon, uh, God willing, in his words. Uh, I was just reflecting on the fact that there is uh, an ongoing discussion in the United States at the moment about high-profile figures going public with their illness diagnosis. Uh, Lloyd Austin, who's uh, the current Defence Secretary, uh, he's recently been treated for prostate cancer. Not only did he choose not to go public uh, to the American public with his diagnosis, he also uh, kept it something of a secret from the Biden administration and President Biden himself. Well, in the last few days, uh, Lloyd Austin has made a, a public address saying he regrets not going public uh, with that cancer diagnosis. He said, I did not handle this right. I sh should have also to told my team and the American public, and I take full responsibility. So uh, clearly, King Charles uh, and the royal family on this occasion have, have chosen uh, to be very public uh, with this diagnosis in the hope that it might help others um, talk uh, about their own health situations. But um, yes, his son, most importantly, Prince Harry, will travel uh, to see the king in the coming days. It's not yet clear whether his wife, Meghan Markle, or his two children will accompany him on that trip. Martha, thank you very much uh, indeed. And so interesting to see the speed of the response uh, from both President Biden and Donald Trump uh, as well. The soft power of the monarchy, uh, they're really in evidence. Well, I just want to take a moment and go back to the statement that we have received from Buckingham Palace this evening, that the King has been diagnosed with a form of cancer. It says, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he's been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King's grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which was made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope it may assist 
public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. I just want to stay with the last points of that statement from Buckingham Palace and talk to our science and technology editor, Tom Clark. Uh, Buckingham Palace making it very clear uh, that this is a personal decision uh, by the King to share his diagnosis to try and assist public understanding. And I guess it could make a real difference. I think if we look at the difference that his decision to go public about the procedure he had for an enlarged prostate, if we look at the impact that had, I think it really could. Um, that is a condition that it's incredibly common. It affects a lot of men as they get older. What we saw in response to that public announcement was a lot more men seeking out information, and we can only assume through that then, therefore, getting um, at least a discussion going about treatment to that condition. Unlike uh, an enlarged prostate, obviously a cancer, the earlier you catch it, um, in nearly all cases of cancer, the more treatable it's going to be, the less aggressive the treatment might have to be, and the likelihood um, of survival is increased as well. So I think it could have a real impact, and that, I'm sure, factored heavily in the King's decision, um, having previously worked with uh, cancer charities as patron. Uh, he understands that part of the disease. At the same time, though, we've been given, a, I guess, a lot of information from the King about what's happened, but also there's a lot of questions uh, still. You know, we don't know what the form of cancer is, what the treatment is. I mean, the variables are, are pretty enormous. Absolutely, but let's not forget that cancer is an incredibly individual disease. It's uniquely based on our DNA, Thank you uh, very much uh, indeed, uh, Tom. We're going to bring in our deputy political editor, Sam Coates, now, because he's got a bit more political reaction for us. Sam. The statements that you get at moments like this do reflect personal feelings around uh, the political scene. James Cleverley, um, who is, of course, Home Secretary, has just given this reaction where he talks about his personal, his wife's brush with cancer. Susie and I have seen the amazing work that medical professionals can do in cancer treatment. I wish His Majesty a full and speedy recovery. It was in December 2021 that Susie Cleverly actually was diagnosed with triple uh, positive breast cancer. Uh, and uh, James Cleverly has talked about how he couldn't speak or sleep. He was interviewed by Sky's Beth Rigby. Uh, and so he knows what this means. He wanted to convey that he knows what this means to the King. You heard earlier from Wes Streeting, the Shadow Health Secretary, who had cancer himself. Uh, so there are personal stories, and I think that's one of the reasons why we've had another interesting comment from the NHS England Chief Executive, Amanda Pritchard. She says, uh, uses this moment to say, if you ever have symptoms or signs of cancer, please do come forward for checks. Yeah, it, it is absolutely uh, important, uh, isn't it? Uh, right, we're joined now uh, by Robert uh, Hazel, who is the Professor of Government and the Constitution at University College London. He's also the co-editor of The Role of Monarchy in Modern Democracy. Um, this is obviously a very personal moment uh, for the family. You know, Sam Coates there just talking about how people have shared their own personal experiences of hearing loved ones with a cancer diagnosis or going through it themselves. But it has got a constitutional element as well. Um, what kind of duties do you expect the King to be continuing to be able to perform? And what is he going to have to step back from? Can I just say, first of all, how very sad I am to hear, hear this news. Uh, I'm the same age as King Charles. We were born in the same year, 1948. Um, and so, uh, although we know that cancer is increasingly common, amongst people of our kind of age. Uh, it nevertheless comes as, as a great shock, and we must all hope for a speedy recovery. Um, but uh, while the king is receiving treatment, if for any reason he is temporarily incapable of carrying out his royal duties, then there's provision for councillors of state to be appointed. They would, in effect, be deputies. And if he's uh, seriously incapable of carrying out his royal duties, then a regent uh, could be appointed under the Regency Acts. So th those are the constitutional long stops, if you like, which have long been in our law, passed by Acts of Parliament. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I would expect King Charles to carry on doing all his paperwork. And there's a lot of paperwork that the monarch has to do. Um, mm -hmm. And being, being the sovereign is really hard work. Famously, the Queen 
used to receive boxes of state papers every day of the year, except for Easter Sunday and Christmas Day. So she only had two days off in the 365 days of the year. Uh, and I would expect that Charles, who's also very conscientious, um, to follow her very hardworking example. So he will go on receiving uh, boxes every day of cabinet papers, boxes asking him to approve appointments, because formally the king appoints all our senior judges. Um, he approves the appointment of ambassadors and lots of other senior public appointments. Um, and he's kept in the loop um, about not only affairs in this country, but let's not forget, he's head of state of 14 other countries around the world. He's king of Canada, king of Australia, king of Jamaica, king of New Zealand, um, and a dozen other countries. And so they too uh, regularly send bulletins um, and being hardworking, he has to try and keep up to speed with the political and social developments in all those other countries too. Now, I would expect uh, Prince William to step up and begin to take a share of some of that work uh, and perhaps also take a share of giving audiences to incoming ambassadors Thank and you. the like. Thank you. It's been really interesting to hear, as you say, some of the consequences of the duties and who's going to be able to uh, step up to fulfil some of those. Thank you very much indeed. I just want to have a last thought uh, with uh, Tessa Dunlop, the historian and broadcaster who's been with us throughout the uh, programme. What are your reflections? Well, just making a note that actually he was extremely adept on Zoom during the pandemic. I remember being struck early on when he referred to the Romanian frontline workers in this country using their own language. He said he'd really bothered to do his homework. And I think we will see that le level of attention to detail when he settles into his treatment and finds a new slower stride. Uh, we can expect to see him certainly in, in a virtual capacity. I just think it is worth noting how immediately Biden and Trump have lent him with comments just how much of the American elective kingship effectively is based on our all, own royal system. And I think we should look forward and, and hope for positive news going down. I think we can definitely uh, think that. Um, a 75 year old who is an energetic uh, monarch with a lot still to do. I think that was very clear uh, from his uh, statement uh, from Buckingham Palace. King Charles diagnosed with a form of cancer starting treatment already. Next up, we'll have Sarah J. Mee at Buckingham Palace.
Good evening. It is 8 o'clock. You're watching The UK Tonight, live from Buckingham Palace. The breaking news this evening. King Charles III has been diagnosed with a form of cancer. A statement from the palace said, during the king's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he's been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which was made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. Well, this evening, the palace also revealed this new image of His Majesty to coincide with that statement. Let's bring in our royal correspondent, Laura Bundock, who's with me here at Buckingham Palace. Um, and Laura, this news came as a bit of a shock this evening because obviously we understood that the King had gone into hospital last week and everything was OK. But obviously the tests that were done there by whatever they found resulted in what we have this evening. What did you make of that statement? I think it was certainly a shock and it was perhaps surprising as well because we'd seen yesterday, haven't we, that image of the King at Sandringham walking to church. Not a long walk, but he seemed and appeared pretty cheerful in that image. And I, I remember thinking when I saw it, well, does this mean that the King will, will see more of him now? But we now know, obviously, that he has, following that procedure, had a cancer diagnosis. We don't have the exact details of what kind of cancer he has, other than that it isn't prostate cancer, but following tests during that procedure, it, is, it was detected. And as a result of that, he has now left Sandringham. He's here in London, arrived this morning, where he began a course of treatment for cancer. And we don't know what kind of treatment that will be, but there are lots of implications to this. First of all, we're not going to see him carrying out any sort of public engagements. We're told that he will be carrying on with the state matters, his red boxes and the like. Um, he'll be still having his weekly audiences uh, with the prime minister. But very much, I think, in terms of the schedule, in terms of when we'll see him kind of returning to the public life that we know he enjoys and, and appreciates and accepts as part of his role, important part, mm. we don't know when that will be. We haven't been given that timetable. Yeah, there are things we don't know, but then perhaps neither does the King at this stage. Let's bring in Simon Lewis, former communications uh, secretary to the Queen. Simon, good evening to you. Thank you for coming down to speak to us about this breaking news this evening. And as Laura just said, there are things we don't know from that statement. And the statement's pointed out that, you know, they're not releasing all the details. They may not yet have them. But an awful lot of information yeah. there that's unprecedented. We wouldn't have got that from monarchs in the past, indeed any members of the royal well, family. Well, I worked at the palace 20 years ago, and really the policy was say as little as you possibly can. This is a completely new approach, and I think the degree of transparency is excellent because people want to understand what's happening, but also it's good for public health generally. The fact is that the king's condition, both conditions, are quite common, sadly, so I think that's really good. I think the palace have given as much information as they possibly feel they can at this stage. But beyond that, I think people will just wish him all the best for the treatment that's ahead. So I do think this is quite surprising and positive. And I'm sure the decision to make this announcement the way it was was made by the king himself mm -hmm. and the queen, but obviously executed by the advisers around him. The king has asked for there to be no speculation. That's why he's been so transparent today. He started his treatment today and has told the public about it as soon as possible. From a practical point of view, Laura, what does this mean? We understand the King will still be carrying out state duties and his paperwork behind the scenes. So constitutionally, nothing changed. It's just what the royal family look like in public that will change for the coming weeks and perhaps months. Yes, I mean, he has a, a, a very public role, doesn't he? And I think what... Um, you know, will have to be accepted is that there will be much less of a royal presence now. I mean, don't forget, it's not just the king who is out of action at the moment. The Princess of Wales, also after her abdominal surgery, we're not expecting to see her on any duties this side of Easter. And while she was certainly in hospital and then recovering and settling at home, Prince William um, has suspended and cancelled and postponed many uh, of the things he was meant to be doing. We're expecting him, he was due to be out and about again later this week. 
but I think that that's the reality. The king has the option of appointing councillors of state. They're basically the senior royals who can deputise for him. And he's got a whole list of them now. The list was recently expanded, but we're not getting any suggestion that he will be appointing them. And I think the palace certainly wants to give this impression that, of course, it's not business as usual, but as much as it can, business is carrying on and certainly constituting. There's no need to make any major changes at the moment. But that does remain, you know, a, a card up their sleeve, you know, as and when the medical advice could or may not, who knows, change. Yeah. Uh, Laurie, you did bring us the news earlier on that we understand Prince Harry is returning to the UK to see uh, his father. We don't know the details of that. You do wonder, you know, what kind of arrival he will have. You might expect it to be low-key. Simon, in terms of what happens now in the coming weeks and months, what will be going on behind the scenes in terms of, you know, we're talking through plans B and C here in terms of royals stepping up for those yeah. public-facing roles. But as Laura said, they're, they're depleted in ranks slightly at the moment. So so what will be going on at well, the I Palace and at Claret Quite House? a few of the engagements will be reallocated, if they can be. And there are other members of the royal family, as you say, the uh, Edinburgh's being a very good example and some of the younger members who can step up. But I think people understand that this is a bit of a hiatus. What will continue, which is so important, is the machinery, the quiet machinery of government. The fact is a lot of the work the king can do with the red boxes that come in and out of Buckingham Palace, he can continue to do. He can see the ministers, he can see the prime ministers. So often when you look inside Buckingham Palace, what we don't see is that machinery of government. So I think that should be very reassuring for people. But the visibility of the royal family is important. Of course, the queen will continue to play her role. I think the family will come together uh, and work out, and the advisors are expert at this, as to what can be reallocated. I think a lot of the people who were expecting visits from the King and others will completely understand yeah. this is a new set of circumstances. Um, yeah, we understand the, the King with his uh, paperwork can read up to a couple of hours a day, so that's a sign that he's still, yeah. you know, prepared to do all of that, but you can understand not wanting to go on those public-facing engagements for health reasons, of course, if you're receiving treatment from cancer, you're very vulnerable um, to picking up all sorts of other illnesses and also the, the tiredness that comes with any form of cancer treatment. It's quite right that he relaxes and takes a step back. Um, Lord, as we've discussed with Simon, this unprecedented nature of the statement, and we saw it when the King went into hospital um, for that benign prostate enlargement, this openness. He was a patron of Macmillan Cancer Charity as the Prince of Wales, and he was very involved with that charity. In fact, he recorded videos for coffee mornings. He went on several engagements with Camilla up and down the country. This is a man who knows all about cancer and the treatment. And the King Charles effect, just from last week, being linked to the word prostate, I mean, the NHS site, that page about prostate cancer had 11 times more traffic every day since yeah. then. And Prostate U Cancer UK saying their online risk checker has been up over 97% yeah. since he went public. I know, I, and I think there is. What we're seeing is this: the, the, the new monarch brings in a new era of mm. openness that we, we wouldn't have seen with the mm. late Queen. And I, but I think he accepts that you know, the, the modern monarch is, is, is a different beast, if you like. And I think he, very early on, following the enlarged prostate diagnosis, realised there was a potential there with that diagnosis that, that could be shared, details of which were shared very openly and very quickly for greater good. And I think that was what we saw when, when they made the announcement. The hope was it would encourage other men to get themselves checked. And again, I think with this cancer diagnosis as well, it's not prostate cancer, but I think by being so open about it, it is a, a very public acknowledgement that there are lots and lots of families, not just here in the UK, but across the Commonwealth, across the world, who are receiving similar news. And that, you know, by sharing this, I think it, it is showing a different side to the king, a side of the monarchy we haven't mm. seen um, before. But certainly he was a patron of a number of cancer charities. And the Queen, on Friday, we saw her opening a new cancer support um, centre in North London. She wanted to carry on and do that engagement. It was already in the diary. She wanted to be there to support it as well. So I think we'll see that kind of support. The others will, will step up as much as they can. But... This is a very, I think, unsettling and uncertain time for the family. Yeah, in that respect, they're like so many other families up and down the UK and around the world. When that cancer diagnosis comes in, it's the word you don't want to hear, and it is terrifying um, in those early days. Laura, thank you, and Simon, thank you as well. Uh, we'll speak again. We have had reaction uh, from the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Uh, the King, of course, as head of state, contacted the Prime Minister after he told his immediate family. Uh, we've also had a reaction from President Biden in the US within the past few minutes. Uh, let's take a listen to what he had to say. Yes, yes. I'm concerned about him, just heard his diagnosis, but I'll be talking to him, God willing.
uh, President Biden speaking a short time ago. Let's bring in Sky's royal commentator, Alistair Bruce, now. Um, Alistair, the, the president's saying there that um, he's concerned for him, as is everyone hearing this news. Uh, talk to me about how the king will be handling this, because a cancer diagnosis is a terrifying and serious thing to hear about. And he is in a situation where he's having to address it publicly within perhaps just days of finding out himself. Well, it's impossible to gauge how the king personally is dealing with this. But I think that if you look at the perspectives that he's faced throughout his time as Prince of Wales and more recently as monarch, of seeing everything in the perspective of a world actually going through significant challenges now, I think that he will recognise that the fact that he has got this challenge himself privately is part of what it's all about. He's a getter honour of things. And I think that he will follow very much the way his late mother did of just being in a position to do everything he can to continue his work, but do what he's been told to by the medics, because they know how best to deal with this. And we don't know the precise details of the cancer that he is currently suffering from. We do know he's started the process of treatments, uh, and those remain very much his personal business. But I think that anyone who has had cancer in their family or who has witnessed people face it, sometimes endure it, often overcome it, will know that you know it's very difficult and unsettling. But for the king and the perspective of the way he does things, I think he will try and use his joie de vivre, his enthusiasm, and his actually inner strength. He's a tough and able 75-year-old to just get on with it. And we understand that the king will be keeping across his state duties and his paperwork while he undergoes treatment. You can perhaps understand why he isn't going out in public in the coming weeks, perhaps months, because cancer treatment itself comes with risk and he won't want to, to meet a lot of people. And, of course, it can be really tiring as well. Give us an idea of what goes on behind the scenes that the public don't see when it comes to royal duties, those duties of state. Well, kingship is a process that involves a great deal of paper. And he is the pivot through which much that is required by government needs to pass. And he receives not just red boxes. In fact, he gets red, black, blue and green boxes, a success, succession of different bits of information and briefing papers and papers that he has to sign and give his signature to in order for them to take effect. And because of the nature of how the nation works, an enormous amount of just function needs to pass through the king's approval. And so, you know, all of that will carry on on the days that he feels like doing it. And for people like his private secretary, Sir Clive Alderton, huge pressure to make sure that the king is only burdened with what he really must be burdened with when he feels like it, I'm sure. But, you know, at the moment, he looks extremely well. He was walking out of Sandringham Church yesterday with the Queen. Obviously, he knew what we now know. And he didn't give much of that away. He had followed his duty as a supreme head of the Church of England by attending uh, morning service, and he looked very happy. And, you know, it's not a long walk back to Sandringham House, but he did the walk out and back. And bearing in mind, he's had uh, some surgery recently, undoubtedly, to do with his prostate. You know, he's he's fit and healthy at the moment. And I, mm. I think for a lot of people facing cancer, it's fitness at the beginning that helps you the most. Yeah, fitness and being able to keep busy as and when you can. A di cancer diagnosis doesn't mean everything stops, which is, I think, so many people who receive that diagnosis want to talk about. They want life to, to feel normal, to continue as normal as much as it can. Um, Alistair Bruce, thank you so much for talking to us. Our royal commentator, Alistair Bruce, there co reacting uh, to that breaking news this evening that King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer. Well, figures show that cancer remains one of the leading causes of death in the UK, with one in two of us expected to develop it in our lifetime. Cancer Research UK says there are around 384,000 people diagnosed with cancer every year.
Around 130,000 of those cases involve people who are aged 75 and over in the UK. Uh, well, joining me now, our science and technology editor, Tom Clark. You can put those figures into perspective for us, Tom, because the figures are rising. I remember, you know, not so long ago when we talked about it on the news as it being one in four, then it became one in three. Now it's one in two. Everybody knows somebody that has been touched by cancer. But as much as the figures are rising, so is the treatment and the prognosis improving for people. That's right. I mean, the figures are going up in part, just what the King is illustrating, the longer that we live, uh, the more likely we are to be diagnosed with the cancer. And as you well know, the UK population is getting older as things currently stand. We're also a much bigger population. The number of people in the UK is increasing, and that's what's driving the numbers up. You're absolutely right. Um, survival from cancer is also, for most cancers, is also improving across the board overall. It's uh, doubled in the last 50 years. And I think that speaks a lot to the palace's decision in a way. Um, we were hearing from your guests earlier how this is an unprecedented uh, sort of an announcement from the palace. This just wouldn't have happened before. If you think back to when uh, King Charles's grandfather was terminally ill with cancer back in the 1950s, one of the reasons people didn't talk about cancer then was there wasn't much that could be done about it. Treatment options were few, prognosis was poor, uh, and it was a very feared disease. Um, given there are so many more treatment options now, uh, there is a point in talking about it. The more people talk about it, the more uh, people go to their doctor when they suspect that something isn't right, the more likely they are to get an earlier diagnosis and hopefully get earlier treatment. And that, of course, means that treatment is le less likely to be as aggressive as it would have been, and there's the, the outcomes and survival of that cancer and its ability to be treated will, will, is, is much better as well. Mm. And, and, Tom, there was talk about the King Charles effect uh, last week when he talked about um, going into hospital for a procedure for a benign enlarged prostate. The NHS website, the page that dealt with prostate cancer, uh, had 11 times more traffic every day following the King's announcement. Uh, Prostate Cancer UK saying that in the same 24-hour period last week, the number of people completing Prostate Cancer UK's online risk checker was up by 97%. And as you well know, because you speak to so many uh, healthcare professionals, as I do here on Sky News, early diagnosis is key. Absolutely key. And particularly for diseases like prostate cancer, it's a common trope, but I think it's true. Men are less likely to talk about their health. They're more, less likely to go to see a doctor, especially with something like uh, prostate cancer. That's, you know, uh, the kind of illness there's been a campaign for a long time for more men to be more proactive. So that announcement from the palace had that really positive impact on public health. And that, I think it would have been very much in the minds of the palace when it, and the king, who ultimately would have had to have approved the decision to make uh, his cancer diagnosis public, he would have appreciated that, partly because of what we saw with his decision to go public about his enlarged prostate, but also as a former patron of cancer charities, he understands the significance of talking about it and getting uh, uh, the earliest possible diagnosis and therefore the earliest possible uh, referral for treatment. That's very much part of it uh, too. OK, Tom, thank you, Tom Clark. there. It's worth reiterating that the uh, King has not been diagnosed with prostate cancer. He has been diagnosed with a form of cancer, uh, the specifics of which have not been released by Buckingham Palace. Well, as you might expect, there has been reaction to this breaking news uh, coming in from politicians past and present. Uh, to talk us through some of that, let's bring in our deputy political editor, uh, Sam Coates, who joins me now. Sam. His Majesty's government is, of course, keeping a very close eye on what's going on in Buckingham Palace. And there has been reaction from the Prime Minister almost immediately that the announcement came from the palace. Rishi Sunak said, wishing His Majesty a full and speedy recovery. I have no doubt he'll be back to full strength in no time. And I know the whole country will be wishing him well. Keir Starmer, the leader of the opposition, head of the Labour Party, said, on behalf of the Labour Party, I wish His Majesty all the very best for his recovery. We look forward to seeing him back uh, swiftly to full health. Now, at moments like this, Sarah Jane, it is MPs who get informed in the Commons Chamber by the Speaker. Let's hear how that happened earlier. I wish to make a short statement. I know the whole House will wish to join me in expressing our sympathies 
with His Majesty the King following the news announcement this evening. Our thoughts are, of course, with His Majesty and his family, and with all wish to send him our very best wishes for the successful treatment and a speed recovery following tonight's news. Lindsay Hall, of course, correct from around the world and from all corners of the United Kingdom, that political reaction coming in. Across the many, many uh, tributes and best wishes, I want to highlight just two, Sarah Jane. For three days, Michelle O'Neill has been First Minister of Northern Ireland, and she, even a part of, uh, she represents Sinn Féin, has issued a statement of good wishes. She says, I'm very sorry to hear of King Charles's illness, and I wish him well for the future. Uh, uh, as hard as it once might have been seen to, to, to uh, happen, it is actually the case that the Sinn Féin First Minister's forged quite a close relationship with the royal family, exchanging letters, attending the King's coronation, uh, Michelle O'Neill uh, also attending the funeral of, uh, of his mother, uh, the late Queen Elizabeth. One other piece of reaction I wanted to take you for is from the Home Secretary, James Cleverley. Now, for him, the news from King Charles was altogether more personal, and he responded by saying this, Susie Cleverley, who's his wife, uh, Susie and I have seen the amazing work that medical professionals can do in cancer treatment. I wish uh, uh, His Majesty a full and speedy recovery, referencing the diagnosis in December 2021 of his wife uh, with breast cancer. She has uh, recovered. He's talked on Sky about the heartache that that ca uh, caused. So personal reflections also from uh, West Streeting, the uh, Shadow Health Secretary, who also uh, had cancer, I think, people across the political spectrum responding in different ways at news that is both public uh, but also intensely private. Sam, it's also worth reflecting on the fact that the King is head of state and he obviously is stepping back from public duties at the moment, as you would expect if you're undergoing treatment uh, for cancer. But behind the scenes, he will still be carrying out state business. So constitutionally, on that front, it seems like it's business as usual for the moment. That's right. The King plays an incredibly important role in our politics, even though he stays out of the day-to-day -day political fray. The monarchy sits underneath everything that politicians do, and he's head of state in a number of countries, not just the United Kingdom. And King Charles, in the year and four months that he has been on the throne, has come to represent continuity and stability. You remember, Sarah Jane, he came in, uh, he became king after uh, his late mother passed away when Liz Truss was Prime Minister. Six weeks later, uh, he was receiving Rishi Sunak as the new Prime Minister. I think King Charles has seen his role to date as someone who has wanted to calm the national conversation, political temperature, uh, temperatures. Uh, he has healed divisions. And I think that that role of stability from somebody who wants seen as a moderniser, wants seen as somebody who might reform the monarchy, now somebody who wants to, uh, as it were, provide a bedrock of stability on which our political system can operate. I think across Whitehall, across the United Kingdom, politicians, I think the system's just turned on its axis a little bit about the worrying news that one bedrock of our a bit of our constitution is just a little bit more unstable uh, than it was this morning. Uh, Sam, thank you. Sam Coates there, our deputy political editor. Yes, that sense of, of a calmness very much reflected in that statement released today on behalf of the King. Uh, well, let's speak to someone who knows uh, King Charles uh, well and was herself diagnosed with breast cancer whilst working for him. Uh, introducing you to the former communication secretary to King Charles III, Christina Kiriakou. Uh, Christina, thank you so much uh, for coming on to the UK tonight to react to the news uh, that broke earlier this evening. You've been through this yourself. You know what it's like to get a cancer diagnosis in that moment. It's utterly devastating. And King Charles went through this with you and his reaction speaks volumes. Yes, I mean, firstly, I would say he's an extraordinarily, extraordinarily empathetic and uh, a fit man as well. He really looks after his diet. And um, we were in the throes of a mad, mad year. It was 2012. It was the year that Kate and William got married. There were so many things going on. And in fact, I received my cancer diagnosis and I, uh, breast cancer diagnosis, and I kept it secret from the royal household for no reason other than that I loved my job, I loved my work, I didn't want to stop work. 
And I was extraordinarily lucky in that my cancer care, and I hope this is the same for the King, I'm sure it will be, um, they fitted it around my schedule. And so I have 56 treatments of radiotherapy in quick succession every single day. And I worked every single day for that, which isn't possible for everybody. But in terms of the King, he has the best medical practitioners around him. Of course he does. And he understands both traditional and holistic medicines. Mm. And he afforded me the greatest attention and care and, and said to me, if there's anything that you need, if there's anyone that I can get hold of, then, then I will do that. And um, I was terribly fortunate. I, I got fantastic uh, care in the UK and um, have lived to tell the story. Um, and I feel certain that King Charles, with all his knowledge and his experience of other people around the UK suffering from cancer, living with cancer, that he will get through this stoically and he will continue the duties that he can continue. I see he said he'll do um, state visits, which is so important to see all those dignitaries, for them to see the king, be able to interact with him. There is no better statesman at talking about business and talking about the geopolitical situation that we find ourselves in at the moment. And Christina, the King is patron of a number of cancer charities and you talk about his empathy, but he is a very hands-on, practical man as well. If he is the patron of a charity, he wants to know all about it. So this is a man who knows all about cancer care, cancer treatment, the diagnosis, the science behind it. And he will know only too well just how important his announcement this evening will be for those who are facing the disease. I, I feel certain that's the case, Sarah Jane. He will have wanted to tell people what's wrong with him to try and normalise a disease that is affecting more and more people. Of course, concurrently, there are more and more cures and medicines available um, that, that can help people uh, counteract this terrible illness. But he will have wanted to put the news out there, not to make some great statement about himself. He's a modest man. He will have wanted just to show people that this can affect anybody, no matter how fantastic your regime is, no matter how fit you are, no matter how wonderful your diet is, this is a disease that can affect any single one of us. And he will have absolutely thought, yes, I want people to know and I want them to know that I am suffering from this, but that I'm going to try and power through this as well. Um, he has a wonderful diet. Uh, in the morning, um, if, if you're taking breakfast with him and you um, uh, lift the wrong uh, lid off the wrong uh, breakfast terrine up, you'll find what looks like bird seeds. And he he really looks after himself. He walks, he keeps active, he, he doesn't eat lunch. Um, he'll uh, take afternoon tea, a very light afternoon tea. And so he will have done so many things that already stand him in good stead at his um, uh, age. And, and that's another report, important reminder, isn't it? You may be fit and healthy, but cancer doesn't discriminate. You have the best diet in the world, but you can still be diagnosed with cancer. And it's an important reminder to people if they have symptoms, and he is 75, and you know, the longer we live, the, the, the more likely we are to get cancer in older years. But I suppose the thing is, with being older, you have so many ailments that you might put down to something else. And that in, in itself is a reminder that if in doubt, get it checked out, Christina. Absolutely. And I think the way Buckingham Palace has handled this um, and the King has handled this is 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 uh, a really, truly modern approach and a correct approach. It's, you know, the first statement saying that he was going in to be checked out for an enlarged prostate. He went in to get checked out. He was not expecting this diagnosis. We, we were told that he um, had a benign uh, prostate diagnosis so that he did he didn't have that cancer and something else has been found whilst he was being checked out 
And and I think you've just said the, those all important words, Sarah Jane. If in doubt, check it out. Um, and 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 his message is simply, uh, you know, to try and encourage people that no matter how frightened you are, move forward and 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 ask, you know, to be seen and looked at and and be reassured. And Christina. We understand that the King is, for the foreseeable future, stepping back from public duties. We won't see him on walkabouts. We won't see him at engagements with, with charities and the like. Uh, other members of the royal family will step in. Talk to me about what that will look like, because we also understand uh, that Prince Harry, his son, is returning to the UK to see his father and talk about his diagnosis. Yes, I mean... Uh, there, there are so many members of the royal family who are completely able. So, of course, we've got um, Prince William, the Prince of Wales. He now looks after the Duchy of Cornwall. So his knowledge has had to increase with um, the countryside and all the things that the Duchy of Cornwall looks, looks after. And he also has his own portfolio, a lot of which is very, very similar to what the King's portfolio of interests has been, young people and education, health, William's more mental health. So William will be absolutely able to step in to some of these engagements. And then you have the Princess Royal. Um, of course, William uh, at the coronation said that he would be um, the King's liege man, his 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 uh, wingman, the person who stood by his side. And this is the perfect opportunity for William to step up to that role. Then we have the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, um, a workhorse. Uh, she, she will do whatever is needed, whatever it takes. And of course, her history with the forces and her patronages um, will mean that she can step into whatever is needed in that area. And then um, Sophie and Edward um, do a wonderful amount of engagements as well. Of course, Edward is is the new Duke of Edinburgh. So um, has that area of his portfolio and, and will be able to help the king if required. So there are so many people around. But what I think the important piece of news is, is that the king will still look after any state visits because it is those state visits where the listening, the seeing statesmen, seeing dignitaries, seeing uh, kings, queens, princes from other territories around the world, um, that the king is best placed to give those reassuring words or, or to listen, to advise and, and be our figurehead. So I think it's been wonderfully uh, thought out and there are more than enough people to assist. And this is what happens in every family, that if someone gets ill, everyone splits the duties. So um, I feel certain that the King will be incredibly well supported, not least of which by the Queen as well. Uh, Christina, uh, thank you so much for speaking to us on the UK uh, tonight. Uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah Jane. Thank you. Now, when he was... Uh, now, uh, just a reminder of the breaking news. Uh, King Charles III has tonight uh, released a statement via Buckingham Palace saying that he has been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, no details as to or what type of cancer it is. Uh, we are told it is a form of cancer. Let me read you uh, the statement that was released at six o'clock this evening. Uh, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he has been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which was made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer.
Uh, well, let's bring in our Royal Correspondent, Laura Bundock, who is with me and has been here throughout the evening since this news broke. Uh, we've also got Simon Lewis, former Communications Secretary to the late Queen. Uh, Simon, thank you for staying with us. Um, Laura, it's worth just going through that statement again because so much in there, but some left out for reasons we don't know, and it may be because the King and his team don't know yet. I think in terms of that statement, it certainly came as more than a surprise, but a shock. And I think revealing the King's cancer diagnosis um, was a huge step. I think, you know, the King wanting to share that diagnosis and making it very clear, he didn't want the speculation, but did in some way want perhaps to show a solidarity with others who were going through a similar diagnosis. But there's a lot we won't be told, so we don't know the details of his cancer. We don't know what kind of treatment he will be undergoing other than that it will be a schedule of treatments, which is why we won't be seeing him out and about for the time being. And we don't know how long any of this is going to take. So we were always told after his surgery for an enlarged prostate that there would be this short period of recuperation. It's clear that I think what has now happened with this diagnosis will require a longer period where we won't see him in these very public facing duties so there won't be a big royal presence anymore the thing i think will be personally disappointed about this you know they talk about the royal year in terms of terms this was the beginning of a new term a term but i'm sure he wanted to hit the ground running as much as he could it would have been packed with you imagine state visits and the like huge number of engagements in his calendar. That's all had to be shelved, postponed, and he's apologised to everyone uh, for having to do that. But of course, while he undergoes this treatment, that is the necessary course of action. And as I say, it's hard because they just don't know when he'll be back. So others can step in. We know he's not needing to appoint councillors of state at the moment, but it, it, is, it is a period of uncertainty for the family. Um, Simon, Talk me through the process of sending out that statement because you've been communication secretary to the Queen. This kind of revelation would not have happened under the Queen, would it? No, probably not, but I think it's a mindset. I think we've seen during the last year a very different feel and tone to communications from the palace, a more open style, whether it's being more open about the programme, television documentaries, books. I just think the whole style was set almost in the first week. So I'm not surprised that this is very much in keeping with that. I think it's a very personal statement. I mean, the fact is it's talking about someone, the King's house. So I think that's a very interesting feature to it. And obviously, timing is everything. I think they waited probably as long as they could before announcing this. And it was announced at the time of the day when we could all talk about it, which I think is the right thing to do for the country as a whole. But ultimately, you have to press the button mm. on that release and people, it's gone across the world. That's the extraordinary thing. Across the world, people are talking about the health of the king. One of the I just wanted to say, I know the people who work closely with him remark on how incredibly fit he is. Mm. I mean, the famous pull-ups in the morning, struggling to keep up with him, people half his age. So I think that's a huge positive that the king is such a fundamentally fit and healthy person. Mm -hmm. So tackling cancer, being so fit, that's got to be a very, very good sign. Yeah, the hope is that that stands him in good stead as he uh, started his treatment today and it will be ongoing. Our Royal Correspondent, Rhiannon Mills, is standing by uh, and joins me now. Uh, Rhiannon, Simon Lewis just mentioning there that this news obviously has been sent around the globe. The King is a huge icon globally. Uh, how has this news been received? Yeah, don't forget, he is our head of state, but also head of state for 14 other Commonwealth realms. So there, of course, is that pressure on him to, I think, tell us the news, but also make sure that those other realms are also aware. What I think is very different is how this has been approached compared to the way that his mother and Prince Philip approached health matters. When they were around, it was always seen as deeply private. They would simply talk about them having potentially a procedure or some form of treatment. Don't forget that in 2021, the Queen spent a night in hospital and we only found out about it after it was broken by a newspaper. And then the palace were really criticised for keeping that private because, of course, as head of state, they are privy to so much when it comes to political matters, um, important day-to-day -day running of our country. So I think there is now this acknowledgement that as our monarch, as our head of state, we do, we do deserve to know 
how he is, whether he is well or not. But I think what's also interesting for me is the fact that there is this element of control, if you like. So yes, they have shared important details. I think the king reaching out and saying, look, there are many families up and down the country, around the world, um, who've been through this this very same thing, this shocking announcement of a, of a cancer diagnosis within their, their family. Um, but also making sure that different elements are kept private. So we know that it's not prostate cancer, but we don't know what kind of cancer it is. We don't know what stage of cancer, and we also don't know what kind of treatment he's having. But in some ways, I think a deal has been done, that sense of, look, we're letting you in to a certain amount of information, but now it's time for the cameras to to stay away wherever he may decide to go to take time to rest. It's time to take the cameras away and give him that period of time where he can have his treatment um, away from the limelight. Of course, though, he would far rather be doing those public facing duties. But of course, he has to go by doctor's advice. And uh, they've obviously decided that, that it's not a time uh, where he should be seen out in public. Um, Rhiannon, we're not going to get a running commentary on uh, treatment and, uh, and what the king is going through, which is quite right. But in terms of his openness so far, mm -hmm. Uh, regarding the state of his health. Do you think that we will get updates as and when it is the right time? I think it's, it's a really tricky balancing act for the palace. And as I said, I think they wanted to, to take control of, of how this announcement was made. Over the weekend, uh, on their social media channels, they were celebrating the work of various cancer charities. But they also know that because of the likes of social media, Rumour and speculation can very quickly spread. And, and the hint from the palace is, look, we want as much as possible for people not to speculate about what exactly is wrong with him. Um, but I think there is also an acknowledgement that that is very difficult. They are one of the most famous families in the world. And the fact that he's having to take this step back from, from public duties, it is going to be a change and it is going to be, be difficult. And the questions are going to going to continue. But I think because they have already shown this level of openness, I think when they feel that the time is right, then yes, potentially we may see uh, more updates, but I suspect not for, for some time to come. Yeah, coming to terms with a cancer diagnosis is a huge thing and to have to do it publicly, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can't quite get your head around it. OK, um, Rhiannon, thank you. Rhiannon Mills, um, our royal correspondent there. Well, the palace, as Rhiannon said, hasn't specified the type or stage of cancer that the king has, but the diagnosis follows treatment for an enlarged prostate just a week ago. Uh, well, joining us now is Dr Tom Rokes. He is Vice President of the Royal College of Radiologists. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on The UK tonight. This is a story um, that's not for the king alone. This is something we hear a lot with cancer diagnosis. Somebody goes in for a checkup for whatever it may be and something is discovered. And it seems like this is the case here. Yes, well, first of all, we would all send our very best wishes uh, to the king for speedy treatment and recovery. You're right, most cancers are diagnosed because people have symptoms, but increasingly, as we're doing more tests for other conditions, you can find uh, unexpected findings on a scan or some other kind of test which might lead to a cancer diagnosis. And I think the hope is that if that cancer is therefore not causing symptoms, that it can often be caught at an earlier stage and therefore treated more effectively. In terms of treatments, I was reflecting um, with our... Um science and technology correspondent earlier on, cancer never used to be spoken about because there was very little that could be done. This is generations ago. It's moved on uh, now. There are higher rates of cancer because, as a population, we are living longer. But also treatments are so advanced. People, people live with cancer now for decades. That's right. We, we, we're better at diagnosing cancer earlier and we have much more advanced treatments, both in terms of surgery, robotic surgery, for example, uh, radiotherapy that can target cancer in, in incredibly precise and accurate ways, and better anti-cancer drugs now that, again, can, can target individual cancer cells. Um, and what that means is that we can treat cancer more effectively, but also leave patients with, with fewer side effects. 
And we've seen that. We know now that, that one in every two pa patients who are diagnosed with cancer will live more than 10 years after their diagnosis. So we're often moving into a stage where not only are many patients cured by cancer, but those who aren't often can live with cancer for many years or even for the rest of their natural life. Mm. Dr Riggs, it's been called the King Charles effect since he announced that he was going into hospital for a benign enlarged prostate and the effect that had on people going to the NHS website, seeking out the page dedicated to prostate cancer. You know, elective, activity on that page was up 11-fold daily. Um, how important do you think it is that the King has come out and spoken so openly. Understandably, he's keeping some of that private, but just by saying that he has cancer, how important is that to the cancer community and all of those affected? I think to some degree, a lot of media coverage can be quite difficult for people going through cancer treatment themselves or who maybe had treatment and recovered from it. But there's no doubt that highlighting the importance of early diagnosis does have an effect. We saw that 10, 15 years ago with Jade Goody and cervical cancer, where the cervical mm. screening went, rates went up considerably and people were genuinely diagnosed earlier with better outcomes. Mm. So I do think speaking, in can speaking about cancer in more open terms is helpful. Most people who have cancer will have treatments that are effective, and in many cases, their cancers will be cured. And so taking away some of that fear, I think, is, is undoubtedly a good thing. Oh, Dr Tom Rakes, we really appreciate your time on the UK tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, well, it's understood this evening that Prince Harry has spoken to his father, the King, about his diagnosis. The Duke of Sussex now expected to travel to the UK to see the King in the coming days. Our US correspondent Martha Kellner uh, joins me now from Washington. Uh, Martha, uh, what details do we have? Well, we do know, as you said, Sarah Jane, that Prince Harry will travel over to the UK to visit his father. Uh, Prince Harry has been largely estranged from the royal family since he moved over to California in 2020 um, with his wife, Meghan Markle. He's returned on limited occasions, notably to attend the Queen's funeral, which he did so uh, together with Meghan Markle. Uh, he also uh, attended the King's coronation last year on his own. Um, so there was, uh, of course, uh, questions about whether he he would return given his father's diagnosis and given the fact that it's no secret that the relationship between the pair is strained. But we are told uh, by a source close to Prince Harry that he has spoken to his father uh, about this diagnosis. Uh, we know that King Charles has spoken to all his immediate family members uh, personally. Confirmation that Prince Harry will travel to Britain to see him in the coming days. We don't know whether he'll travel uh, on a commercial flight or whether he'll charter his own private jet. We also don't know whether he'll be accompanied uh, by Meghan Markle and their two children, but he will travel uh, to see his father. Uh, coverage in the US of uh, King Charles's diagnosis has been fairly prominent on the network news channels over the past couple of hours. I, I think indicative of the ongoing soft power of the monarchy uh, in this country and this enduring fascination here uh, with all members uh, of the royal family. And uh, President Biden, in fact, is uh, on the campaign trail at the moment. He's uh, on the campaign trail in Nevada. And he was asked uh, by reporters about this diagnosis and I think we can hear what he had to say. Yes, I'm concerned about him, just heard his diagnosis, but I'll be talking to him, God willing. So, uh, President Biden, very brief comments there, but saying that he hoped uh, that he would be able to speak to King Charles in the near future. Also, reaction from the former president, perhaps the future president, uh, Donald Trump. He wrote on his Truth Social uh, social media account, he said, King Charles has cancer. He is a wonderful man who I got to know well during my presidency, and we all pray that he has a fast and full recovery. So that's the, the political reaction. And uh, there's an ongoing discussion in the United States at the moment about high profile figures going public with their illness diagnosis. Um, Lloyd Austin, who is the defence secretary, he was recently diagnosed and underwent hospital treatment for prostate cancer. He kept uh, that treatment private up until the point that he was hospitalised. And even after he was hospitalised, he kept that uh, diagnosis private, not just from the American public, but also 
also from uh, the White House, from the Biden administration. Uh, in the last few days, uh, Lloyd Austin has said that he doesn't believe that he handled that diagnosis correctly. He wishes he had gone, gone public with that diagnosis sooner. He said, I did not handle this right. I should have also told my team and the American public, and I take full responsibility for that. He said he is a, a private individual who uh, thought that he was doing the right thing by going through this diagnosis privately. King Charles has clearly uh, decided, together with the royal family, to, to handle this uh, in a different manner entirely. Martha, thank you. Martha Kellner uh, with reaction from the United States to that breaking news this evening uh, that the King, King Charles III, has been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, now, when he was Prince Charles, the King lived at Highgrove in Gloucestershire. And we can speak to someone now who worked there uh, for many years. He is Grant Harold, a former royal butler. Uh, Mr Harold, thank you for joining us here on the UK tonight. First of all, uh, your reaction to that surprise announcement earlier on today from Buckingham Palace. Thank you for me on. Uh, like everybody, I was I was shocked. I didn't expect to hear that statement coming out uh, because I think with the royal family, one is they don't normally make announcements like that, as we've seen with the, the King's late parents. You know, they never discuss these kind of health uh, issues. And, and the other reason I say that is because as many loved ones, include myself, when we have family members that have cancer or we lose our loved ones to cancer, you know, it's, it's something that it scares people. And again, it's a big thing for the King to actually openly talk about it. And it was only yesterday, correct me if I'm wrong, it was World Cancer Day, and even the, the Royal Family put posts up about it. And here today they've announced that, you know, the King King is going to is having his own battle with cancer as well. So I was absolutely like everybody else, completely um, shocked by the news. Um, Grant, the King is seventy five, and we know that those of the older generation, the longer you live, you are likely to get cancer. One and two get cancer. So, in that sense, statistically, this news may not be a surprise, but it is a shock. The King has cancer. But we've heard so much throughout the course of this evening about how fit and healthy the King is. And I would imagine at Highgrave, a place that's so close to his heart, uh, you saw that in action, his, his healthy lifestyle, which may well stand him in really good stead in this situation. Absolutely, Sajin. I mean, Prince Harry spoke in his book about his exercise regime, you know, the, the kind of exercise that the king likes to undertake. I'm aware of how healthy his diet was. Again, the king has openly spoke about this diet over the years. You know, I was I was aware that he was a very fit, uh, healthy individual. And again, it goes to show that even with a, a very he healthy lifestyle, it doesn't rule really out from any uh, kind of diseases. But the king always was uh, very strict about his diets, uh, about his lifestyle. And again, Highgrove is somewhere that he he goes to, to escape from everywhere, from the world, really. Even after his coronation, I remember it was reported on the day of his coronation that evening, he came back to Highgrove. And I've often said to people that he calls it his sanctuary. In fact, he's even got a little church within the grounds called the sanctuary. And it is somewhere that he likes to escape to. And again, I'm guessing that in between treatment or once treatment is completed, that this is somewhere that he'll he'll return to, as well as to his other love, which is Bert Call on the Memorial Estate in Scotland. Yes, you do hope that he gets a chance to, to get there to escape in between treatment, because we understand that he will be... Uh, receiving a course of treatment which started today. Harold, perhaps having seen the King up close as he was then, Prince Charles, you could give us an insight into how he may be feeling about this news. I mean, you can never really know how you'd react receiving a cancer diagnosis, whether it be for you or a loved one. But in terms of he is a man who has said, I am carrying on with state business. I am doing my paperwork. I just can't get out mm. in public for the foreseeable future, which is understandable when you're going through treatment for cancer. Perhaps you can give us an insight into his mindset in approaching this diagnosis. He's, do you know, he, he's somebody who will not let anything stop him. So when it comes to health, I am not surprised that he said that behind the scenes is going to carry on. I'm fully aware, you know, when I worked for him for several years, I saw the, the kind of man behind the scenes. And he's somebody who puts duty, like his late mother, he puts his duty ahead of everything. And did I see even including above his health? Because when I worked for him, I remember in the mornings, 
you would already be up and about. And when I went to bed, and I used to get up quite early, and when I used to go to bed quite late, we're talking about you know, midnight, he would still be working away. He is somebody who works extremely hard. And obviously, when I was there, his health was, was in its prime. But I mean, I'm guessing that even with this diagnosis, he's still not going to let things stop him and you can almost guarantee that he said that he's going to carry on with his work he's got his red boxes which are almost daily apart from I think Christmas day and also his audiences with the prime minister that will probably continue as well so I think behind the scenes he will carry on doing the duty of monarch and not only that he'll still work as highly as hard as he always has I don't see him kind of slowing down which is also going to be interesting because I think with the treatment I'm sure it will slow him down but I, I just I just know what he's like and he's he's a he's really as a hard worker and, and somebody very determined and you can guarantee like many other uh, thousands or hundred thousands of people he will want to knock this on the head and he will do his best to go over this and carry on uh, as as a monarch well grant harold really good to get your thoughts on the program this evening grant harold former role thank you really appreciate your time on the uk tonight thank you let's get a final thought from simon lewis former communications secretary to the late queen Simon, a final reflection from you on what is huge news, but as we've been hearing throughout the course of the programme, King Charles, minimal fuss, wants to carry on business as usual as much as possible. Final thought, the family, his family will come together, as you say, mm. Prince Harry's coming back, the Queen went to see him hospital a number of times. I think in occasions like this, families come together, doesn't matter what the family is, so that's thought number one. Thought number two, as we've said all the way along, he's a very fit, healthy, strong man. Thought number three is what we don't see about the palace and indeed place number 10, the advisors behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. He will be slightly capacitated, but the people around him, the people he knows and trusts will continue with the machinery of government, the traffic between Buckingham Palace and number 10, all that goes on. So I think mm -hmm. knowing that he's supported, not just by a loving family, but by loyal and committed aides must be very reassuring to him mm -hmm. tonight. And reassuring to people who themselves are going through this, families around the UK, Absolutely. families around the world. It was World Cancer Day on Sunday, and this announcement in that respect, in respect puts it into context. You know, the king speaking out. Well, what, what do you think that will do? Well, what, I what's think the more, effect? I think more specifically, men... <laughs> are terrible about their health. Yeah, men, um, of, men of a certain age as well. Absolutely. They just want to hide away from yeah. them. I think the King's done a fantastic service to men of a certain age, mm. many of whom will be thinking, maybe I will go and get that yeah. particular thing checked out. So yeah. that's a tremendous step forward, I think, for public health. Uh, yeah. And the second thing is just the awareness around, as yeah. you said earlier, one in two of us will get cancer during our lifetime. And so being ready to mm -hmm. confront that in the way that the King is doing, I think, it's important for yeah. all of us. Yeah, it's something for everyone to think about, and also family members and friends as Absolutely. well. If somebody says something's wrong, keep badgering them to go to the doctor. Uh, when in doubt, get it checked out. Simon, thank you so Pleasure. much. Uh, Simon Lewis, former communications uh, secretary to the late Queen. Uh, well, that is all from Buckingham Palace for the moment. We'll continue our coverage of that breaking news this evening. Uh, King Charles III diagnosed with a form of cancer. He began his treatment today. I'll be back after the break. Yelda Hakim will be here as well.
It's nine o'clock. I'm live at Buckingham Palace. As it's confirmed, King Charles has been diagnosed with cancer. Over the next hour, we'll bring you reaction from leaders here and around the world. Buckingham Palace says the King made this news public to raise awareness for all those affected by the disease. He'll postpone all public-facing duties and is said to be positive about his treatment. In Washington, Joe Biden said he was concerned about the diagnosis. It's understood the Duke of Sussex has spoken to his father and will return to the UK in the coming days. Tonight, we'll assess how the King's openness about his diagnosis could encourage others to get checked. Well, good evening to you from Buckingham Palace. We understand King Charles has begun receiving treatment for cancer and will now postpone his public duties. He's said to be wholly positive and chose to make the details about his health public to help raise awareness for those affected by the disease. Well, this is a statement from the palace this evening. It says, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he has been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which was made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. The palace also released this new image of His Majesty to coincide with that statement. Well, earlier I spoke to former communications secretary to King Charles, Christina Kiriakou, about the significance of today's announcement. Firstly, I would say he's an extraordinarily, extraordinarily empathetic and uh, a fit man as well. He really looks after his diet and um, we were in the throes of a mad, mad year. It was 2012. It was the year that Kate and William got married. There were so many things going on. And in fact, I received my cancer diagnosis and I, uh, breast cancer diagnosis, and I kept it secret from the royal household for no reason other than that I loved my job. I loved my work. I didn't want to stop work. And I was extraordinarily lucky in that my cancer care, and I hope this is the same for the King, I'm sure it will be, um, they fitted it around my schedule. And so I have 56 treatments of radiotherapy in quick succession every single day. And I worked every single day for that, which isn't possible for everybody. But in terms of the King, he has the best medical practitioners around him. Of course he does. And he understands both traditional and holistic medicines. Mm -hmm. And he afforded me the greatest attention and care and, and said to me, if there's anything that you need, if there's anyone that I can get hold of, then, then I will do that. And um, I was terribly fortunate. I, I got fantastic uh, care in the UK and um, have lived to tell the story. Um, and I feel certain that King Charles, with all his knowledge and his experience of other people around the UK suffering from cancer, living with cancer, that he will get through this stoically and he will continue the duties that he can continue. I see he said he'll do um, state visits, which is so important to see all those dignitaries, for them to see the king, be able to interact with him. There is no better statesman at talking about business and talking about the geopolitical situation that we find ourselves in at the moment. Let's bring in our royal commentator, Alistair Bruce, who is standing by. Um, Alistair, just listening to Christina Kiriakou there speak about the King's empathy for those who are living with cancer and going through treatment and talking about his knowledge as well, being a patron of so many cancer charities. With that as a background, what was your reaction to the statement today? Because 
it was very measured and almost in a way reassuring, talking about him being wholly positive, wanting to continue working through treatment. Well, I think when uh, anyone's friend says that they're not well and that they've got cancer, you, you react to it. When it's the king, you react to it too, because in a sense, the king has been a part of our lives uh, for all of his, really, because there's been public interest since he was born. And now he faces, like so many other people, cancer and all the questions and uncertainties that that can sometimes bring. So I think that the nature of the way in which the king has announced his cancer uh, has made sure that since he started needing to go to hospital the other day to have his enlarged prostate checked and all the processes that he's gone through, he's been very open about it. And I believe that reflects how keen he is to recognise the work he's been doing with these many charities, all of which will have been telling him that in this modern day and age, communication, getting the support of family and friends around people to help them through, and the way in which a lot of charities help families struck by cancer deal with shortfalls in income, difficulties in where they live. And I think the king, in a different situation, but yet at the focus of national life, himself dealing with cancer, is the way that perhaps unexpected to him, some of the leadership of his reign might progress. In terms of what happens now, what will be different? We understand that the king will be carrying out state duties as normal, carrying out his paperwork as normal. He will not be carrying out any public facing duties, which perhaps you would expect for someone who is undergoing treatment for cancer. They can be vulnerable during that treatment, so that is perhaps expected. But it reminds us of what goes on behind closed doors. We're used to seeing the working royal family out and about at these public engagements. But so much goes on behind the scenes. Alistair, give us an insight into what the king will be doing when he talks about continuing state duties. Well, the king has much to do in terms of playing his part in the function of government. Mm. And there is much paperwork to be seen, things to be approved, and his imprimatur, his, his involvement in decisions by Parliament being turned into laws, all of that can be done very comfortably from home. I think that we watch with great interest the way in which Elizabeth II, during the period of COVID, and when her health was declining, found a way to break into public life by engaging with many of the public duties that she would otherwise have done, using the technology available uh, through her video phone. And I'm sure the King will find a way of, of reaching out. But he'll have the support, obviously, of the Queen, of the Prince of Wales, and soon, hopefully, the Princess of Wales will be back uh, doing some of the supportive roles that the King might have wished to do himself. He's also got his brother and sister, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh and his wife, and also the Princess Royal. So the King will be able to function very effectively as monarch. And it doesn't really require him to do much more than be at home and read. If he can read and he can write and he can receive uh, the prime minister regularly and give counsel and listen, then he's performing all his constitutional roles. So in a sense, although there'll be a gap because he can't do so much, I would imagine, but that's between him and his doctors. Uh, he will continue entirely with his reign. And just a final thought from you, Alistair, um, this level of openness from the royal family is unprecedented um, in terms of learning about the health of the king and in recent weeks, the Princess of Wales as well. The king in the statement has asked uh, the public and the media and everyone not to speculate, but in being so open, can we expect updates from him when he can and when is appropriate? Do you think that that is something that will happen in the coming weeks and months? Well, I think we're all very surprised because the late Queen didn't really want to share her details and her medical situation because she was of a generation that didn't think that was quite what you did. But the King comes from a newer generation and recognises that it does help to be open and honest and to give sharing more information might be, in its own way, a catalyst to other people looking after themselves a bit better, helping the community, being part of 
uh, the role as head of state, encouraging people to look after themselves. I expect, you know, we will see more changes, but I don't know in what form. The palace has given guidance that they would rather there was no speculation as to forms of counsel or where the king is being treated. I think to take what we have been told to recognise that he has a journey to go on, uh, that he is able to complete the work that he has undertaken as king, but uh, to do it in his own way between him and his doctors and his family. Um, Alistair Bruce, uh, our royal commentator, uh, thank you very much indeed. Well, I am hoping to have our royal correspondent, Laura Bundock. Uh, she's just joining me now. If you'll bear with me for a second. Very busy night down here at the palace. Uh, Laura has been out getting the latest information and details and putting together a, a report for later on in the evening. Uh, Laura, thank you for rushing back to be with us. Just to reflect on, on, on what we've learned so far today. Mm. And the reaction, because as I've been saying um, to my guests throughout the evening, this level of information coming from the palace with regard to such personal health matters is unprecedented. Yeah, we were saying that, weren't we, how unusual it was a couple of weeks ago when we learned to, uh, of the Princess of Wales mm. having undergone surgery and then the King going public with his enlarged prostate diagnosis. And this another step, I think, it, it, in that process, really. So following his surgery, we know that after tests, um, he has been diagnosed with a cancer, not mm. prostate cancer, but another cancer. But I think he was certainly said to have been delighted by the positive impact going going public had um, when he made the announcement following, you know, the, the prostate diagnosis that so many more people were starting to click on the websites, get in touch with charities. And that's what he'd hoped by, by sharing that information. That's what he hoped the effect would be. And so I think, you know, this is obviously a much more serious diagnosis, but again, going public, sharing this news, because as someone who has been a royal patron of a number of cancer charities, as, as Prince of Wales, he has met and spoken out in support of cancer patients for a long time and knows exactly what them and their families are going through, and of course, personally, too, as well. So I think there is a sense that, you know, he shared this. Um, it would have got out, probably, wouldn't it? He wanted to have a bit of control over sharing this information, but uh, his ambition was always one for the greater good, really, in, in doing that. Mm. And in terms of the public-facing royal family, obviously, we're not going to see the king for a while while he undergoes treatment. Uh, we know Prince Harry is coming back to the UK in the yeah. coming days to talk to his father about his diagnosis, as you would expect. You know, the, the king told all of his close family uh, before telling the prime minister and going public. Um, is the Prince of Wales in action at the moment? Because, of course, he took a step back, didn't he? Because, of course, his wife underwent abdominal surgery. Yeah. So what royals are in play at the moment? <laughs> I mean, you're probably thinking, who, who's left? Well, well, the Queen, Camilla, is, is carrying on engagements. Um, Prince William, for now, has been helping Kate settle back mm -hmm. at home. So she was discharged the same day as the King, actually. So she's been home for a week. She won't be taking part in any duties for uh, two to three months. Mm -hmm. We know that much. Um, but we were expecting William to return to some form of his kind of public life uh, later on this week. So mm. that will pick up again. Um, but of course, the King and Kate both out of action for now. There are, of course, the Edinburghs as well, the yeah. Gloucesters, um, Princess Royal. But yeah, what we are looking at is a period of uncertainty mm. and you could say instability when it comes to having a royal presence. That is what the King knows. The late Queen always said it. You have to be seen to be believed. Mm. He will not be enjoying this. And as of course, <laughs> apart from the diagnosis, he will, he wants to get out there. Mm. He, he wants to be out um, taking part in the state visits and the like. And mm. that is now kind of sitting on the shelf. So yeah. the rest of the family will step up. No councillors of state are being appointed. They're the, the royals that can deputise for, the, for big constitutional things mm. for the king. Um, for now, that they're not. he's not taking that decision. But of course, that is an option should he need it later on. But I think I'm getting the, se the sense in the palace they're trying to stay as calm as possible. Yeah given that this is a, a, a situation in great flux. OK. All right, Laura, thank you. Our Royal Correspondent Laura Bundock with the latest from Buckingham Palace. Uh, we will continue uh, to bring you more news uh, from the Palace throughout the course of the evening, but right now uh, I'll cross to the studio in Yalda. SJ, thank you so much. And we will be going back uh, to SJ and Buckingham Palace a little later in the programme. Well, since that announcement from Buckingham Palace, there's been messages sent by leaders from around the world. US President Joe Biden expressed concern and said he hoped to speak with the king later. Have a listen. 
Mr. President, do you have a message for King Charles? A message yeah. for King Charles. Yeah, call. I'm concerned about him. Just heard his diagnosis, but I'll be talking to him, God willing. Uh, our U.S. correspondent, Martha Kellner, joins me now live from Washington. And, Martha, we just uh, heard a, a little uh, response there from uh, U.S. President Joe Biden. Yeah, President Biden yelled uh, on the campaign trail uh, in Nevada ahead of the primary elections there. Just a, a short comment on King Charles, but saying that he hopes he'll be speaking to him soon, in his words, God willing. So we've heard from the current president. We've also heard from the former president, possibly the future president, uh, Donald Trump. He wrote on his social media account, King Charles has cancer. He is a wonderful man who I got to know well during my presidency. And we all pray that he has a fast and full recovery. Now, uh, King Charles's diagnosis, uh, since it came to light a few hours ago, has been prominent on the network TV channels over here. I think uh, indicative of the ongoing soft power that the monarchy has in the United States and this enduring fascination that you hear uh, on a day-to-day -day basis speaking to people here, this enduring fascination with the royal family uh, and clearly now King Charles as its linchpin, his health is uh, of concern to a great many people over here and I think you can see that through the media coverage here. Yeah, and, and Martha, of course, um, Prince Harry, um, King Charles's youngest son, who lives in the United States, uh, has also said that uh, he's uh, going to come back uh, to the UK uh, to see his father. He, we understand that he's also spoken to his father. Yeah, Prince Harry Yalda has been largely estranged from the royal family since he moved over here in 2020 to California uh, together with his wife, Meghan Markle. He, of course, resigned uh, his royal duties. He's made limited trips back to the United Kingdom since, notably, uh, of course, when the Queen died. Uh, he attended her funeral together with Meghan Markle. That was something of a reunion with his uh, brother, Prince William uh, and Kate Middleton. Uh, he also returned for a, a well child uh, charity awards event but his trips back have been limited so uh, of course questions about whether this would prompt a visit back well we're told by a source close to Prince Harry that he will return that he has spoken uh, to his father about his diagnosis we know that King Charles spoke personally to all his uh, immediate family members including his two sons including uh, Prince Harry so Prince Harry will travel back to Britain uh, in the coming days we don't know whether he'll travel uh, commercially when he flew back for the for the coronation he traveled on a scheduled uh, british airways and american Air airlines flight we don't know whether he will charter a private jet or if he'll be accompanied by his wife and his two children but he will go back and that is significant because it suggests um, that any uh, strained relationship between the two is being put to one side to focus on his father the king's health just going back to uh, President Biden there, you said he's on the campaign trail. We heard a short clip there of him uh, responding very briefly and said he would uh, reach out uh, to King Charles. I mean, uh, President Biden in, in the last few weeks has been dealing with his own uh, defence secretary, uh, Lloyd Austin, uh, who had uh, cancer and went through a form of surgery himself. Yeah, that's prompted this ongoing discussion here, Yalda, about just how high-profile and politically influential figures uh, deal with their own private health diagnosis. Lloyd Austin, you mentioned, uh, the, the current Defence Secretary, he's recently been diagnosed late last year with prostate cancer. He has undergone uh, hospital treatment for, for that cancer, yet he chose to keep that diagnosis uh, private, secret, not just from the American public, uh, but from his boss, in effect. Uh, President Biden didn't know about this diagnosis until after Lloyd Austin was rushed into hospital uh, for emergency treatment at the start of this year. Uh, well, since being released from hospital, Lloyd Austin has said he regrets the way that he handled this, this diagnosis, that he wished he had made it public sooner. I'll just read you a little bit of what he said in, in an address to the public, a television address. He said, I did not handle this right. I should have told my team and the American public public and I take full responsibility. So I guess it's in quite stark contrast to how King Charles has chosen to approach this diagnosis uh, going so public and how the royal family uh, are choosing to deal with this moment. It, it does show the two contrasting approaches there.
Uh, indeed, very much so. Martha, thank you so much uh, for bringing us up to date there. That was our US correspondent, Martha Kellner, there, just bringing us an update on the global reaction. Um, well, certainly the US reaction. We heard a little there from uh, US President uh, Joe Biden. She also brought us up to date uh, on Prince Harry, uh, who has, uh, we understand, uh, spoken to his father, and uh, we also understand he is on his way uh, to the UK. Now, uh, joining me now is royal commentator Julie Montague, the Viscountess uh, Hitch uh, of Hinchingbrook and our international affairs editor Dominic Waghorn who uh, joins me here in the studio as well. Thank you both uh, very much for joining us here on the program. I mean Dom we're just getting some international reaction uh, at the moment. We heard there from President Joe Biden. We've also heard a uh, reaction from the likes of um, the Canadian Prime Minister also Donald Trump. We have Donald Trump um has commented saying King Charles has cancer. He's announced he is a wonderful man who I got to know well during my presidency and we all pray that he has a fast and full uh, recovery. Um, we've also heard from the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Christopher Luxon, uh, who says kia kaha, which uh, is Maori for stay strong, King Charles. On behalf of all Kiwis, I wish His Majesty all the very best for a speedy uh, recovery. And we've, as you say, we've heard from um, Canadian Prime Minister and the American President and also from the Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, who says the thoughts of all Australians are with King Charles and his family. We wish him very much a speedy recovery. I'll be sending a message to the palace this morning. We hope that King Charles has a speedy recovery and a return to his duties as soon as possible. And I think it's, it's important to say that Canada and New Zealand and Australia are three countries that uh, King Charles hopes to get to. We don't know how uh, speedy his recovery will be. He's sounding positive, um, but for now he's got to give up public-facing duties. Uh, but if he's not able to go towards the end of the year, it will be a huge frustration and disappointment to him. One of the ambitions, he's made it very clear from the beginning of uh, his uh, time, of the beginning of his reign, uh, is to get out across the Commonwealth, but also particularly to get, a, get across the Commonwealth realms. Those are the 15 countries, or the 14 countries, as well as Britain, that he is the head of state of. And obviously, Canada, Australia and New Zealand are three on that list. And we have the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in October. And the plan, I think, although the palace isn't always open about exactly what is planned for various reasons, but we understand the plan was to get to Canada possibly before uh, Chogham, as it's called, which is going to be in Samoa, uh, and then go on to Australia and New Zealand either afterwards or possibly before as well. So if he's not able to re recover by then, it'll be frustrating for him on a personal level, but also I think he's the kind of monarch, and made it very clear, that he's the kind of king who wants to get out, meet his subjects, be with the people, very much to be seen, to be believed, as his, as his mother was. And so I think it will be very frustrating if he's not able to make these trips. Yeah, I mean, Julie, just picking up on that point, you actually saw him just yesterday. King Charles III? Yes. No, no I, you didn't. No, no, no. <laughs> I was, so my, sorry, my briefing notes say that you, you did yesterday, so, yeah. No, um, but I think also, to, just to Dom's point, it's incredibly frustrating for him if this carries on. We don't know exactly what treatment is happening. We know it started today. He was in church yesterday. There's photos of him. The treatment began today. And the palace has been incredibly open compared to past monarchs, in particular Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth. And this shows a different type of monarchy with King Charles. He is very open. That was a detailed statement. It wasn't just announcing that he's been diagnosed with cancer. It get more into the details around how that diagnosis was made. It was because of the treatment that he was having on his prostate uh, recently. And from that, uh, those investigations, this has come out. And King Charles is really using his platform, which is wonderful for public fi figures and people of influence to use their platform to then be able to uh, say, this has happened to me. And we saw recently, in particular with the prostate uh, diagnosis um, and, and treatment that he had, that there was a huge increase in search around prostate. And that can help to lead to early detection, to treatment, and really exemplify these health organizations like Macmillan, which he's a patron of, to, to have that platform and have, again, what they do, which is so important um, for, in particular, uh, cancer individuals highlighted thanks to 
thanks to the king being so open about this. And he's been praised for that, that this is a very modern approach uh, to, to uh, you know, this level of detail that we're seeing in these statements. Absolutely. And, and that is what is astonishing and extraordinary and I think wonderful for people. We saw this in the coronation. The coronation was much more inclusive than any coronations in the past, and him up updating us, the palace updating us on exactly what was going on, not two weeks later, like what you just mentioned um, with uh, uh, um, Biden's, I think... Lloyd Austin, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, today, the treatment happened today. The announcement came out this evening. They're not waiting, they're not delaying, they're keeping the public up to date. I mean, Joel, just picking up on that point with L Lloyd Austin, because there was this level of sort of secrecy because he did try and keep it under, under wraps and he did come under criticism as a result. Yeah, and I think people will say, you know, sceptics might say that the palace has chosen to do this and King Charles has chosen to be as transparent about this uh, because they want to avoid speculation. And, and they might say, we, we live in the kind of world where if you don't feed the beast, the media, then things get out, speculation happens, you know, a huge amount of speculation about a number of celebrities and public figures. If they don't say what exactly is going on. But I think it's more than that. I think, you know, he is the very model of a modern monarch uh, and he likes to be someone who is up to speed with the media and is informing the media. And part of that, I think, for him is being transparent. And it's part of his sort of royal personality. And that is, I think, um, is being out there, being being transparent and being accountable, I guess. Um, but also that's, that's something he wanted to do in person and physically and get out geographically to his subjects at the end of the year. And he'll hope to be able to do so still. Yeah, well, um, I'm just going to bring in my, my next guest. Uh, I can now speak to a friend of the King uh, who's worked with him on a number of initiatives. Joining me now is Lord Willie. Thank you so much for joining us here on the programme, Lord Willie. Just your reaction to the news uh, this mm. evening. Well, first, let me express my sympathy for His Majesty and, and all his family. Now, these must be difficult, difficult times. But like all of you guessed, we wish him a speedy recovery. I mean, I, I was speaking to him during the Christmas break at his house when he was jovial, he was uh, animated and engaging, which he always is. But, you know, when, when he's confronted with something like this, he wants to use his platform, be a, be a role model, in many ways, to say to men of my age and or, or of a particular age, look, you need to get checked. We, we all know, for example, with prostrate that one in eight men can die of that. And when it comes to when it comes to black men, it's one in four. And so whilst it might be difficult for him and his family, he's able to say, look, uh, let's use this moment to encourage people to get checked, because the sooner you get checked, with a serious illness like cancer, the, the better place you are to effectively deal with it. And I, I think it's, as one of your guests said, a, a, a modern monarch um, that uses e even his own the moment of worry to be the king we want him to be. Indeed. I mean, I, I think, you know, it, this is a hugely uh, sort of um, significant bit of news that we've received over the course of the, the last three hours. Three hours ago, it was um, announced and this statement came out. But at the same time, as you say, this is something that people all over the world go through. It, it really is. Uh, and it's difficult to confront because nobody wants to confront with the, with the uncomfortable truth that you've got a, a life-threatening illness. And so often we close that box and ignore it. And that's when the problem lies, because the earlier you diagnose something like this, the better place you are to deal with it. And, you know, I'm in my, my early 60s now, and, and it's a reminder to me and others that we need to get checked. We need to open um, that, that box and look after ourselves. And the, the king's been a beacon even before this a beacon to say, health matters, let's eat right, let's get checked, and we can all be better for it. And I guess in, in many ways, from what we know of, of the king, you know, the fact that the, the statement also more or less says this is still business as usual for him, he's going to carry on. Mm. I think that's part of him too. Um, a lot of the conversations that I've had with him about him wanting to, to, to do great things, to, to be a beacon, to close inequality gaps. I remember him once saying to me, Simon, I'm impatient. You know, I'm 70, 70 odd, and uh, I want to get things done uh, now rather than rather than later. And I think that is a monarch with a mission, a monarch to serve, and a monarch to to lead to to lead from the front. 
And I think that's why you and your guest and, and former prime ministers and hopeful prime ministers have leaned into that and said, this is this is a very good man. This is a this is a great monarch. And even in a time of distress for himself, he sought to tell the public and encourage them to get these diagnoses is because he knows that's the best way of getting effective treatment. Lord Woolley, uh, we're really grateful for your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, more from the studio in a moment. For now, let's go back to SJ, who joins us from Buckingham Palace. SJ. Yalda, thank you. Let's recap tonight's breaking news from here at Buckingham Palace. The King has been diagnosed with cancer and has started receiving treatment. He is now postponing public duties as a result. A statement released by Buckingham Palace uh, says that the King is wholly positive and chose to make the details about his health public to help awareness for those affected with the disease. Our Royal Correspondent, Laura Bundock, has more. The King appeared cheerful on Sunday while making his way to church at Sandringham. Not long after, he left Norfolk for London to begin his cancer treatment. How are you feeling? The news coming a week since he was discharged from hospital after surgery for an enlarged prostate. He doesn't have prostate cancer, but no more details on his diagnosis. In a statement, Buckingham Palace said, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he's been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. This was one of the last times we've seen the King, Christmas Day and celebrating surrounded by his family. I think for the King now, he will be taking the advice of doctors and I think very cleverly trying to make sure that the situation he is in is a catalyst for as wide a group of people as possible to be aware of how important it is to get cancer found, diagnosed and dealt with. The King personally shared the news with his three siblings and both sons. Prince Harry, who's not been in the UK since his court appearance in June, will travel here in the coming days. And Prince William, who is himself off work supporting Kate after her surgery, is in regular contact with his family. Already there are messages of support for the monarch. Mr. President, do you have a message for King Charles? A message for yes, King Charles. I'm concerned about him. Just heard his diagnosis, but I'll be talking to him, God willing. And what's next on the I wish to make a short statement. I know the whole House will wish to join me in expressing our sympathies with His Majesty the King following the news announcement this evening. Our thoughts are, of course, with His Majesty and his family and with all wish to send him our very best wishes for the successful treatment and a speed recovery following tonight's news. Can I send my thoughts and indeed my prayers to His Majesty the King and wish him well for a full recovery and a return back to public life. And let me also send my very uh, best wishes and my thoughts with Her Majesty the Queen and all the members of the Royal Family who will be deeply worried at this time. This has certainly come as a shock. The King, we're told, is remaining positive and looking forward to returning to public duties. But we simply don't know when that will be. For now, all his engagements paused and postponed. The Queen will carry on with her official duties, wanting to continue with this engagement last week, opening a cancer centre. No councillors of state are being appointed, but the family will step up as now begins a period of uncertainty and a period with a significantly reduced royal presence. Well, leaders here in the UK have been putting their reaction to the news on social media. The Prime Minister saying this, uh, wishing His Majesty a full and speedy recovery. I have no doubt he'll be back to full strength in no time and I know the whole country will be wishing him well.
Uh, this from the leader of the opposition, Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer, posting on X, saying, On behalf of the Labour Party, I wish His Majesty all the very best for his recovery. We look forward to seeing him back to swift, full health. Uh, well, just some of the uh, reaction from the political uh, sphere to that breaking news. King Charles III uh, diagnosed with cancer, starting his treatment today. Let's bring in our deputy political editor, Sam Coates, who's at Downing Street for us tonight. Um, and Sam, as head of state, there could be constitutional implications of this announcement. But as far as we know, it is business as usual. That's right, Sarah Jane. Look, the monarchy is the bedrock of our nation, as well as the bedrock of our political system. So when you look across the reaction uh, across the United Kingdom from politicians, it, it tells lots of different stories. You've got the reaction of those who themselves were touched by cancer, um, Shadow Health Secretary Wes Streeting, who was diagnosed and treated in 2021, or James Cleverley, Home Secretary, whose wife um, uh, got breast cancer, uh, sending their best wishes. And, and what that does is it reminds us that, as well as monarch, uh, the uh, uh, King Charles is human uh, as well as a head of state. Uh, I, I think the reactions tell us about the evolving United Kingdom. We had tributes and best wishes from Michelle O'Neill, three days in the job of being First Minister of Northern Ireland. She represents Sinn Féin, a party uh, that has had a long and difficult relationship uh, with the monarchy and whose party wants to break up the United Kingdom. But there uh, was her statement representing uh, change in Northern Ireland. But more than anything else, I think what the reaction of the political system demonstrates is the role that King Charles plays, vital role, uh, uh, introducing stability in a, in a at times fractious political system. Look, when he became uh, the monarch, when he took over from his mother 16 months ago, Liz Truss was prime minister. It took just five weeks before he was welcoming in a new prime minister in the shape of Rishi Sunak. Political tempers were fraying, temperatures were high. He has turned himself into a stability monarch somebody offering continuity. That wasn't necessarily something looking at the ye long years as Prince of Wales, you would have thought, might have thought he would be a reformer and a change merchant. But no, he wanted to introduce stability uh, into our political system. He has calm temperatures and he has been much loved, I think, by politicians for doing exactly that, which is why I think the fact that tonight uh, his future uh, uh, has um, been put into uh, uh, the diagnosis has, I think, uh, caused consternation throughout uh, Westminster and beyond precisely because of the role uh, that he has played, uh, as it were, reinforcing and steadying the ship of state in the time since he became uh, King Charles. Sam, thank you. Sam Coates, our deputy political editor there, with reaction from Downing Street. Uh, well, joining me now is Julian Payne, former communications secretary to the King and Queen. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Sky News. Um, we heard about the King's diagnosis around six o'clock this evening. It came as quite the shock. What was your reaction to the news, Julian? Well, I think, like everybody else, it was it was um, it was a shock. Obviously, he's just been through um, a bit of a battle and come out, and everything was looking uh, rather positive. Yeah. Um, and so, it obviously, disappointed for him. I know that he will be extremely frustrated because he'll want to be getting on and, and doing the job which he cares so deeply about. Um, but given he's facing this, he will immediately be thinking, well, how can I how can I take this situation and use it as an opportunity to raise awareness of the thing that I'm dealing with so that hopefully it may help some other people? Yeah, you certainly get the sense of that, don't you, from when we heard two weeks ago now that the King was going into hospital for a planned procedure to do with his prostate. That raised awareness. There was an increase in internet searches for prostate cancer and symptoms. He is a man that seems to like to turn a negative into a positive. Yeah, I, I think it's. I think on that particular issue, the NHS saw inquiries about prostate issues go up by over a thousand percent, which is absolutely stunning. And I know that he was enormously pleased that th this was. A difficult situation that he was facing but as you say as he always does he thinks well if I've got to deal with it how can I make this something which can be useful and given that he has been patron of a number of cancer charities including Macmillan and Marie Curie for a number of years he will know just how important it is that people deal with or check things out early and I'm absolutely sure that one of the reasons why he has shared the news this evening 
is for that same reason. There'll be conversations that have been happening up and down the country and will continue tonight where people will be saying, look, that thing that has been bothering you, let, just go and get it checked out now because you can see what happens if you do. You can catch things early. And, and if he can have that effect, I think he'll be very satisfied. Yeah, Julian, that seems to be the thought, doesn't it, behind this unprecedented level of communication about something so private from the royal family. Do you think that he will continue to communicate throughout his treatment? Yes, I, I, I think the king sees himself really as a sort of... Uh, uh, his role is duty and service, so it's less about him. It's how can I use these circumstances and make them a useful part of my, my role as head of state, head of nation. So his feeling is these things should be shared, but at the same time, it's important that he does have some space to keep some privacy um, for his own recuperation for his own treatment, which is why we're not hearing more detail this evening. I expect that there, at some point, when there is a necessary update, we'll hear about it. But this is a change. This is not something that happened during the reign of um, of the late Queen. And I think this is just another uh, small sign of how this reign is slightly different, but hopefully it feels more open, more transparent, and some very fundamentally useful information comes out of it. Yeah, Julian Payne, um, former communications uh, secretary to uh, the late Queen and Prince Philip, thank you so much uh, for joining us on Sky News. Um, well, as uh, Mr Payne was saying there, uh, King Charles wanting to turn something negative into a positive and raising awareness, as the statement put it, uh, to those who are living with cancer around the world. Uh, Yalda, back to you. SJ, thank you so much uh, for all your reporting there from Buckingham Palace. Now, as you heard earlier in the programme, the King was due to travel to Australia on an official trip later this year. Sky's Nicole Johnson joins us live now from Australia. And, um, Nicole, Australians are uh, waking up to this news. That's right, they are, and Australia's uh, members of parliament were attending a church service this morning ahead of the new parliamentary year. Uh, they have sent their best wishes to King Charles, the country's Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, saying, our thoughts are with King Charles and his family. We will be sending a message to the palace, and we hope that he has a speedy return to health. We also heard from the country's uh, uh, leader of the opposition, Peter Dutton, sending his best wishes. And over in New Zealand, the country's Prime Minister, Christopher Luxon, also hoping for a fast recovery. And while there's a strong Republican movement here in Australia, there's a genuine fondness for King Charles. As we just heard, he was expected to travel uh, to Australia in October. The full schedule hadn't been released, but there was a great deal of expectation about that trip. So people will be wondering whether that trip will take place. As you said, it's still relatively early in the morning here, but this story is getting a great deal of coverage. It is the lead story on the country's national broadcaster and is featuring very highly on all of the commercial networks. And I'd expect that we will continue to be hearing a lot about it over the coming days. Yeah, indeed, Nicole. I, I mean, as we were saying, you know, he was due to travel to Australia on an official trip. Um, no clarity at this stage um, as we wait and hear more at this stage. It's just that one statement, although the King has said uh, it will be business as usual. It's difficult to speculate uh, for now what will happen next. That's right. Here in Australia, people don't know. We've only had very short statements from the government at this stage. No doubt they'll be in contact with the palace and uh, the attorney general, the representative here. So a lot of sort of unanswered questions from the Australian perspective. But as I said, there is a great deal of fondness for King Charles here. Uh, he has travelled here multiple times. Uh, there's a lot of respect in Australia for his environmental credentials. He actually spent some time being educated in Australia and he also worked on an outback farm in the country. So many of the country's elder population will remember those times and those visits. And not only Australians, there's a huge a population of British people here, some one million people with uh, UK 
passports are still living in Australia and at this time of year, it's, it's summer here, though it may not look like it behind me, but there are many people from the UK on holidays in Australia and they'll also be hearing this news this morning. Nicole, thank you so much uh, for that update from New South Wales. Let's talk now about what the King's decision to go public with his diagnosis might uh, do for cancer awareness. Joining me now is Nina Baru, founder and chief executive of Walk the Walk charity, of which the King is a patron. Thank you so much, Nina, for joining us here on the programme. For the last few hours, we've heard words like stoic and the fact that the King really wants to take uh, this diagnosis and turn it into something uh, positive by talking about it, by being so public about it. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. N Nina, I, I, can you hear me now? I can hear you now, but I didn't hear uh, the question. Uh, no, that's fine. Nina, I said for the last few hours, we've heard things like stoic and the fact that the king really has wanted to take this diagnosis and turn it into something positive uh, by, by encouraging people to get tested. I, I think that's really, really wonderful. I, I think that for anyone to get a cancer diagnosis, it's really quite shocking. And it's a lot to take on board. And I and he has been such an advocate and such a supporter of so many cancer charities that I think I think it's very brave in the first place because it's very different supporting um, cancer from afar. It's very different when it's actually yourself. Um, but I, I but I think that he's absolutely doing the right thing. And even if you know a handful of people look at him and it makes them take advice or go and get checks, then it's absolutely worth sharing sharing that news. But I think it takes a lot of courage. Uh, indeed, and he's sort of known, and a lot of people talk about the fact that he's a an incredibly hands-on patron. He is, as you say, a patron of a number of um, cancer charities. So he would know all too well about the impact and the importance of, of going public. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that, I think in a, in a way it will also help him as well, because naturally there would have been a lot of speculation. And, and I think that when you are literally going through treatment yourself, you want to surround yourself with positivity. Um, King Charles is one of the most positive people you could ever, ever want to meet. And certainly his relationship with Walk the Walk, he's always been very, very keen to encourage people to realise their own potential for good health and well-being by what they eat and how they, you know, make lifestyle choices. So, you know, that they're the roots of his his sort of belief. And, and I'm sure that now he's putting all of those beliefs into practice as he starts um, treatment. Nina, we're really grateful for your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on the programme. You're welcome. Thank you. And I wish him a very, very speedy recovery. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Well, we've still uh, got Julie uh, Montague and uh, Dom here with us in the studio. We're just hearing so much, aren't we, about the importance of speaking up and, as you were saying earlier, a, sort of a modern approach to, to sort of coming out, putting out a statement like this and knowing the impact it's going to have. Absolutely. I mean, we can look at past monarchs and, you know, there really was that division between the public life and the private life. But it's very different with King Charles in that he has always been, even as Prince of Wales, much more open about a healthy lifestyle, about organic foods, about farming, as far as how it affects him as well. And being able to, I think, put those messages out. And again, looking at just some of the footage we were just watching, him as a monarch, he doesn't just turn up to these events where he's a patron and sort of turns up, waves his hand or cuts the ribbon and then leaves. He's very hands-on, he's engaging, he's conversing, he is having tea, he's having coffee with people, he's laughing, he is, and they mean something to him. He's learning about yep. what's happening to these people. Ex absolutely, he's very engaged and he wants to know. He's such a hands-on monarch and, and I think he's a very active monarch as well. And that is what is so exceptional about the statement that came out today. It was much more detailed than we've seen before in the past, but it's because, in my view, is that he he wants to be able to get this message out, to use his platform, a 
as somebody who's a, of influence to make sure that th this platform can then help these health organizations. I'm just talking to Nina right now, this and, and also the search that we saw, the increase in search when he had his prostate procedure. The same thing will now happen as far as early detection, we hope, for other types of cancer, whatever it may be, and diagnosis and treatment. And this is a positive, can make a positive impact on these organizations and individuals themselves. I mean, Dom, uh, as you've been saying, I mean, we are getting some um, statements and remarks from leaders around the world, and no doubt we will have uh, many more uh, throughout the evening and tomorrow. I'm sure we will, yeah. We just had a tweet from President Biden saying, navigating a cancer diagnosis, treatment and survivorship takes hope and absolute courage. Jill and I join the people of the United Kingdom in praying that His Majesty experiences a swift and full recovery. Now, that's a president who knows uh, more than he'd like to have about cancer. His son, Beau Biden, of course, died of brain cancer. And the president himself had a, a former skin cancer removed in surgery that left no cancer behind. Um, he's also somebody who knows about serious ill health, having had brain aneurysms. People know who know Joe Biden know that he he's very good at reassuring people who are who are ill. So I think we'll hear from others like him uh, in the hours ahead. And as you were saying, I think it's important to stress this. Uh, what, the, what the King has done is a very significant break uh, with history. It's kind of in, in keeping with the times that we live in. But his grandfather, King uh, George VI, died of lung cancer. No one knew he had lung cancer. And some historians believe, actually, that even he didn't know. He wasn't told by his doctors. So possibly only his doctors knew that he had lung cancer when he died of it in 1952. And the Queen herself, we only were told she had mobility issues in the last days of her life. And I think her death certificate records old age as her cause of death. And there's a reason why monarchs uh, were very reticent about giving any revelation about their ill health, because historically it was, it was actually a cause of, of weakness. And that kind of lingered all the way through into the 20th century and into the 21st century uh, with, Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth, with Queen Elizabeth II. But with King Charles, you know, he couldn't really do that. It's not the way he is. It's not how he rolls or how he rules, as we've heard from his friends. It's just not in keeping with um, the man and the style of monarchy that he obviously uh, wants to adopt. Uh, he has to be open and frank, and he's sharing what he can with us um, in this statement, and no doubt will do so in the, in the days and weeks ahead. Yeah, I mean, Julie, even with his coronation, which was less than a year ago mm. now, it was sort of praised for being very inclusive. He spoke about a lot of issues. You know, he brought in a lot of people from different sectors of society. Absolutely. And again, we saw that in the coronation, as you just mentioned, it was incredibly inclusive and it was wonderful and very much celebrated. And he wanted to make it a, a, a coronation that reflected his own values, and that's exactly what he did. And we can now see this, again, moving into this diagnosis, that this is something that he wants to be able to use the platforms, uh, the platform that he has, and also to champion um, those uh, cancer organizations that he's a patron of to make sure that these uh, organizations get the awareness that they de deserve. And what better way to get the awareness if you've just been diagnosed yourself with cancer. And I think recently we've seen uh, the royal family itself, uh, Princess of Wales being very open about her abdominal surgery. Um, we've also seen Sarah Ferguson being very open about her secondary diagnosis of cancer. And now King Charles, of course, being open about his uh, prostate uh, procedure and now this cancer diagnosis. And we are in a different uh, era with the monarchy and it makes the monarchy much more authentic and relatable. And that is, I think, a monarchy that most people want to see. Indeed, very much so. Let's just, um, this hour, uh, bring up the statement from uh, Buckingham Palace that uh, we saw about uh, four hours ago. It said, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he's been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Uh, throughout this period, his Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. So this, this is very much in line, isn't it, with his with the, the character that we've been hearing of, of a man who's just carrying on. I mean, Dom, you talked about the potential trip to Australia in October and, and Chogham. Um, 
how frustrating it would be for him because he is someone who's described as working incredibly hard. Yeah, he likes to be out. He likes meeting people. He likes being with people. He likes being with his subjects. But he he has adopted the form of monarchy that his mother basically invented and pioneered. And we talk about the mystique of monarchy, which was hugely important for, for rulers and, and monarchs throughout history. Um, how you kind of... It's called kind of the brand of monarchy. And, and in the past, the mystique of monarchy was sort of staying in your palace, people keeping people guessing about um, and you about you and sort of and uh, being a bit of a blank canvas so your subjects would think the most of you. Now, the Queen changed that and she really wanted to go out across the world and for people to see her and to celebrate her and to celebrate the monarchy. And in her first couple of years, I think, she went round... I think she went to 52 countries. And that tour set her up as this kind of... really the first jet-set uh, global icon. And we've, we've seen the Pope, John Paul II, since. We, we've seen rock stars and film stars sort of follow in that... In that Path, but we forget the Queen kind of invented that idea of being a jet set icon. Now, King Charles is going to be very different to that. Obviously, he's older and he, he doesn't really have the Queen's... He's not a young Queen with all the bling and glamour that Queen Elizabeth had at the time. But he wants to get out and he wants to certainly mirror his mother in, in the sense of getting out and being amongst his subjects. We understood that it was a very ambitious plan to go around the world and see as many countries as possible. And I think the understanding that, that may have been tailored back a bit, but at the heart of that is getting out to Commonwealth realms the countries where he's head of state, and as many Commonwealth countries as possible. And he's made it very clear that he wants to be... The Commonwealth is going to be at the heart of his reign. So if he can't do that, if he doesn't recover enough, um, clearly he's saying he's positive about it, the treatment's begun, and he's optimistic about... Um, the, the route ahead. But if he can't get out yeah. to these countries ahead of the Commonwealth head, Heads of Government meeting, I think, yes, it will be hugely frustrating on a personal level, but also because that's the kind of king he wants king to be. He wants to be. Dom, uh, Julie, thank you both for joining us here on the programme. Well, uh, that's all for tonight's programme. Thank you for watching The World with me, Yalda Hakim. See you tomorrow at 9pm. The news at 10 is next, leaving you there with that live uh, image of Buckingham Palace.